charge for that. Gentlemen, oh. uh, as we get rolling here, and we'll get to it after this opening spiel, this is our 53rd episode, which puts us at, uh, this will come out, I believe, March 30th. Okay. Which puts us at just shy of our one year so anniversary. We're gonna do, are we going to do something special for the year mark, or what's going on here? Uh, well, considering this is the episode. and Special guest. This is anything. the year mark? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, that's what I'm saying right now. This you said just shy. Well, because technically, I'm just confirming, but I'm pretty sure our first episode was April 1st, which is kind of hilarious. Well, what's that cool YouTube channel you just pulled up to? <laughs> uh, wildly that's adequate. Super dope. Yeah, everybody should like, like share, and outfit. Subscribe. Swat uh, share and subscribe. Share and subscribe this YouTube episode. channel, guys. How many subs we got? April 1st, 2023. So yeah, this oh, will come out almost the there. 30th, so it'll be like two days short of... Uh, oh, our God. one year anniversary ain't that some shit. Such a nice, such a nice looking yeah. why. So why, now we're gonna have to cut that out, right? <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> also, um, it's a little chilly, chilly in here. Yeah, I don't know why you made me. Can you close? It's kind of chilly. I'm glad bro. it's open because I'm like kind of hot. And I'm sweaty, really cold. But you do what you need to do. I'm really cold. You do can what you, you can need you to close do. How, how, how can two ex- how can two experiences what? be so different? It's right behind you. It's literally right behind you. How can Patrick be? Oh, uh, <laughs> Patrick! See how I have to do this, and all yeah. you have to do is just reach over to get it. Patrick, how could you be cold and Maddie is hot? That doesn't make sense to me. Well, I don't know. Cause I've been running weird. around. I've been sweating, just doing stuff while we're setting up. My beard's too long. It needs a trim. I'm hairy. Mm. Uh, I just, you know. He's hairy. I'm oh, hairy. I hope the curtains closed. I hope they look they're closed. closed. You know, we are gonna have to do something about these green curtains though, because that was some feedback yeah. I got. Now that they're, they're actually in frame, was people are like, you really need. Why? Because they're, they're ugly. Yeah, they're like they're just hideous. Mm. Yeah, and they're like you really should get like a it, it's brown a strange or a cream or a gray or something. It gives very um, it gives like um, kind of cat in the hat vibes. Sure, okay. sure. Even I though, even though I hate the word vibe, mm-hmm. it yeah. does. How's my audio still? Is it still sounding okay? It's good. You're so good. Your baby. mic should be tilted up a little bit. There you go. Now we're good. Yeah, oh, I mean so it was good. good. Yeah, it's good. Perfect. Patrick, you're so good. I can't even believe it. How's everybody doing? So good. <laughs> I'm very good. Uh, how am I? Can you pass me my wallet, please? I don't really want to, but because okay. you asked so nicely. The one part of our set that will never change. Ah, oh, fuck. I took Mecha Godzilla home last week and I meant to bring Gigan. Shit. It's okay. We got we got Lysol. We got Lysol behind got Malcolm. Lysol. We got a screwdriver. Yeah. Uh, do we want to do we want to sort of discuss this newer this uh, different furniture or do we want to no. just well we had this set up last week and now we don't have to use your couches from your like living room dining room dining uh, guest room guest, room guest room sure. guest, yeah, uh, guest room makes guest living room somebody sleeps guest living room or guest dining room guest dining room alcove Hang what is that spot hangout made spot made up a word um, so the couch <laughs> can you cut to um, the B cam real quick Matt cut to B cam Cut to B cam. Um, so the couch that Malcolm and Mark are sitting on currently, we we got lucky in obtaining this couch. We did. I'm gonna be hyperbolic for a second. It was a ruthless bidding war between it, us and, and a grandma. It was a war of attrition for sure. It was a war of attrition, and she faced. She was facetiming her daughter. Yeah. She was shown it. She at one point she took the price tag and walked over. She to was it. be. She was being a. She was being a bit coy about it. She was like, oh, you know, like are you guys looking to buy this one, and we were like, yeah, we're thinking about it. Yeah. Uh-uh. Looking back, we should have said like, "Yes, we were looking to buy yeah, it," because yeah, yeah. you were kind of like, "Yeah, we well, you know we're we're considering, we're thinking about it." And then she was like, "Oh, okay." The thing is, I didn't want to be like so one hundred percent in case she was like, "Oh my god, like no, I was here first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double down." We a couple days ago, and we were looking at. I don't think it was this couch, or maybe it was this couch. It was one of the couches. Maybe it was Mima's couch that we were looking at when we were at Restore, and They're I all told you guys as soon as we walked in, and I was like being a hundred percent serious. I was yeah. like, "Do not." Go like running over to anything in here yeah. and be like, "Oh my god!" Blah 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 blah. Because mm. all that's gonna do psychologically is make people think like, "Oh, I was kind of interested in this, but now fuck or, it." It's like, well, we're that, or we could, or we could do that. Fast. Or we could do that and like overreact to like a piece of shit, and then someone's like, "I gotta buy this." Sure. <laughs> this gotta buy it. As like a diversion. The thing yeah. is, people are scumbags, and the second they know you want something, they're gonna want it more. Exactly. Yeah, she, she she sensed that we were like standing around it and looking at it a lot, and then we we kept sitting down on it. And then so she immediately called her daughter, FaceTimed her, showed yeah. her it, Ch- took, took the, the price tag, tag, took yeah. the price tag away. Because when you take it away and you bring it to the front, the front um, cash, yeah, yeah. then they're just—it's kind of like yours. They're gonna Bitch move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So What'd then we were. With it? What? What'd you do with it? She took it and then went to the front people. But then she came back and like put it back. Um, oh. And then we ended up like. We talked with her and we were like, "Listen, yeah, we want to make a move here. What are you saying?" And she was like, "Honestly, I'm looking more for like a leather anyway, so go for it." Wow, I'm surprised she didn't grab the black leather one. I, well, I pointed it out. I was like, oh, there's a black leather she one that's didn't like, super comfortable. And she was like, oh, I hate black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
the hard pass. What do you think she meant by that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there was it was, was double, a it was a double meaning. Lady? It was a, she was a white old lady. And it was a double meaning uh, for sure. Did she ha- did, was there an S? Did she add an S at the end of that? Uh, she may have. <laughs> wow. Hey, We're slandering this person. She did not <laughs> add an S. Yeah, we did not add an S. Guaranteed. What I liked was that Patrick told me like I was talking with him on the phone the other day when you guys had gotten these two things, and he's like, "Yeah, we took the three seater from like an old lady." And I was like. What do you mean you took it from an old lady? Because in my head, I imagine just some like tug of war, little old lady, mm-hmm. yeah, like coming up to me and being like, "Oh, I'll take this." And like Patrick runs over and snatches the place tag. And- <laughs> he, he, kick, he kicks the uh, stand out from yeah, under. Yeah, like and she falls walk, and kicks her, blacks out. out. Somebody help! And then as they're helping her, we're like picking up the couch. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, somebody help this lady. Lift with your knees. Lift with your knees. Out. God. Um, but yeah, so we got this set up. I think it's good. Maybe we'll just get like a teeny little coffee table to top it all off. But I like that we also have a much better. Side table now, some so, side piece action. Remember when we were kind of stressed about the idea of the couches not matching and that sort yeah. of stuff? This table mm. ties the whole room together. You know why? Yeah. Why? Because it's light gray and dark gray, and the couches are light gray and dark Where'd gray. You got that? Uh, Walmart, because I went to Winners and Restore today, and neither one of them had fuck all. And then when I was done work today, I was like, let me just go to Walmart on a hope and prayer and see if they have it. And they had like this one and some other yeah. foldable tables, but the other ones were too small, like same height, but not a lot of table space. That's no, not bad. So, he he know, saved better. Now he's living better. Is that their slogan? I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. Save right. money, live better. Yeah. Save money, live better. Yeah. Thank you, Walmart. Eat, in a, eat a McDonald's. Eat some McDonald's in here. That should be a part of their slogan. Oh. Be, be sad. Be depressed while you're in the McDonald's. In here. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there a sadder place on the planet than, than McDonald's, McDonald's in a Walmart? Yeah, I don't think there, I don't is really there, don't honestly, think it's is. a pretty, it's a pretty exciting place. I think it's sad as a kid. It's a super exciting it's place. Crazy as exciting. an adult, I walk by there and, and my, my life's energy gets sucked out from that. Like, <laughs> I, I don't even go in there, but like, as I'm walking by, I'm like, this is, this is getting me sad here. I think the two sadder places would be like, a strip club but like during the day <laughs> okay like not at night not like, on like a saturday like you should night, be at work like thursday <laughs> at like three o'clock yeah um and a funeral home the this is a bit of a <laughs> this is a bit of a side note here but Please. i don't know what it is something about strip clubs just rubs me the wrong way completely why i just i never want to find myself i feel like you're gonna get up in there and be like this is this is awesome this is extra no it, it just, usher's, it, usher's yeah is gonna start playing and he's gonna get down <laughs> bro it just feels like you go in there and you're admitting defeat yeah like, i have Jesus. no other way of honestly, getting honestly, the only a girl's like attention i'm uh, getting a you the know only, what i'm saying the only i would never ever allow myself to go in there by myself that would be like admitting that's, my life's a failure that's I think crazy. that's, sad. that's, that's insane. Sad. i think yeah. i think if we if i would ever go it would be like oh guys trip we're just gonna go like have let's see how silly this is let's have a good time that's the only way you could convince me but no one's actually going to like you know meet people you know what i'm saying no one's actually going to like experience well, <laughs> the like they're not no one's like unironically trying to like see the people and get attracted like they're attractive and, like you're just kind of going to have fun type thing yeah, yeah, like, yeah. With, with your guys bro i could never like i don't think i could see myself ever going to be like oh my god like i need a lap dance yeah, or crystal, oh my god i just crystal, go see it yeah crystal's so beautiful i gotta go see her crystal's again, so beautiful whatever. i gotta go see like yeah. get her lap i wonder, dance I wonder if diamond remembers me or, or i got i gotta go watch this coal miner's daughter Oh uh, coal miner. I don't know. I was watching How I Met Your Mother, and <laughs> okay. Robin made that. Over reference. the Christmas break, they, uh, I had a s- or cut it out. Uh, <laughs> where I work is that a strip club? No, <laughs> no, is that the rest? <laughs> it's it's the drywall. I had, I had, there was a Christmas party where I work, and apparently every single year after like the dinner and everything is done, like we everyone goes out to another bar to get drinks, and then right after that, all the scoundrels hang around, and then they all go to the strip club. <laughs> So that's yeah. so this year that it's included terrible. Liam, mm. that included my brother, mm. that included a couple of the other closer guys Dude, I had you at work. Gone. Like that the was, younger that guys. Crazy. I, I went, I like I drove some of them there mm. and I couldn't go in, obviously. Because if Isabel, that obvious? Isabel ever found no. out about me going into a strip club, you didn't have I'd, to find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you done. didn't. Well, I didn't touch. I didn't touch anybody. I didn't. <laughs> now your parents are gonna but, hear that your brother went though. Oh, they knew he went. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. They didn't care. Yeah, did I pull um, but like I, I got a look inside. Not because I went in, like just from outside, the doors are open. And just, Did you like what you see? I didn't see very much. <laughs> I didn't see very much, but in my mind, it's just like, it's very sad. That's what I was going to say, bro. I assert, a, I'm going to assert the statement right now. It's sad place. It's a sad, sad place. It's a sad, sad gross place. It's only men going to watch only women and all the men are just there getting hard with each other. Mm. Honestly, I feel like... How, how messed up is that, bro? I feel, yeah, I, f- I feel like... I feel like I'm saying that it might be fun to go, all of us as guys, but I feel like we'd get there, we'd like have a laugh for a minute, and then I'd be like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just around, like, sit around unless like, what's buff- going on? Unless the buffet is great. I was about to say, but what if it's buffet. more of like a buffet? What are you, th- or what are you expecting? Michelin star level? <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe, hold on. All I need is chicken fingers about? and 
We're, go we're, to a bar. You don't have to go there for food. Bro, you're saying that there's no chance the food could be great? Like, Thai House isn't a Michelin star place. Yeah, but it's a restaurant. It's a restaurant. But I'm just saying there's a chance. You're not going to go to a bowling alley and, and, and get the best Honestly, shit you've ever The bowling alley has solid food. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Champs. No, you liked, you liked no Champs. No matter what I say. <laughs> when we went. Remember the last The burger time was all right. Yeah, the burger was You loved good. it. It was pretty good, loved yeah. Loved it. Love. All right, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> it was very good. That burger, I don't know what was going on with that burger, but it was crazy. <laughs> Champs like, went hard. Yeah, it was crazy. All right, I loved the it. The reason I even made that reference of like the strip club in the middle of the day is because on the way to one of my aunt and uncle's houses in Mississauga, we always pass by this strip club. And my dad and I always What's look it at it and laugh. Pure Gold Gentleman's Club. Oh my, that Pure Gold? That's, yes. the one, that's the one that uh, that's literally right across my work. We always <laughs> go past that. And like my dad and Michael and me will always just kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. snicker or whatever. And my mom is like, whatever. But it's always hilarious to my joke when we go. And it's like, yeah, we're going to see our cousins and our aunt and uncle mm-hmm. on like a Thursday night. But we're going for dinner. So we're it's like four o'clock. Mm-hmm. And there's like, you know couple cars parked out we're always like come on man four on a thursday like <laughs> you've got to have that's somewhere crazy better i need that's it. crazy uh, there has to be somewhere better you can be than <laughs> pure gold yeah. at four o'clock on a thursday that being said pure gold we are open to any and all sponsorships please go on <laughs> it, I was, two, I was, two, two summers ago i drive by every single morning on the way to work it would say adriana chechix is in town good all right all right malcolm was driven wild with i want to <laughs> Big fan, big yeah. fan. Can't say I, can't say I this, wasn't curious this, at the time. This is the last time I'm going to bring this up. I just would like each of you to rate on a scale of one to ten how sad and lonely one would have to be to, especially at four p.m. on a Thursday. How do I rate that on a scale? How do I rate that on a scale of one to ten? Ten, you are just rock bottom, and four, for, three p.m. Like, for you're myself, an incel. For ten, myself, ten is your incel. For myself to do it, just generally four p.m. on a on a Thursday. Yeah, and you're how old are you? Can we, say, can we say two 30. p.m. Can we say two p.m. is that? That's like dead middle in the work day. Two p.m. Two p.m. and you're thirty. I'd say an eight out of ten. Okay. I don't want to cast judgment, but what I will <laughs> say judgment. is there better be like a very good reason, a very Christopher Nolan level compelling tale yeah. and reason as to why you're there. Like one of the girls <laughs> is like literally in danger and you got to save her. Yeah, like there, <laughs> there better be a damn good reason. You're not there for yourself. Because if, no. if it's just like yeah, I got nowhere else to be at two p.m. on a Thursday, <laughs> ten. <laughs> yeah. so there better be like yeah. a compelling reason so I, I i said 10 is incel by the way so sure. that's what you're saying incel? okay then nine yeah I'm, okay. I'm i'm thinking eight eight or nine we're thinking we're thinking just yeah. about incel territory i'd like to bring i'd like to bring this topic back to one thing yes mm-hmm. so if you went to a strip club with like your work friends like mm-hmm. you think she would actually be upset of course she'd be upset. oh bro why I'd be, if she went to a male why? strip club with like her girlfriends just like checking out these yeah but she's not dudes dancing but, but let's I say would... she's doing it ironically and she just wants to like <laughs> laugh with her friends I wouldn't be going ironically. I wouldn't be going, oh, it's just for fun. We're what all do you mean? Going. Like, I'm sure your work friends aren't, like, trying to get laid there. No one ever goes to a strip club to try to get laid. Or, like, they or get like, a lap dance. They want to get some looks. They, get, they got lap dances there? You get, they got lap Some girls give blowjobs if you pay them enough money. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, my goodness. You don't want a dirty blowjob, though. That's gross. Well, listen, I mean, <laughs> beggars can't be choosers. Um, um, open has gone all over the place. This has <laughs> gone far. I want to stop talking about this for sure. <laughs> maybe dirty blowjobs is a good place to end. Yeah, maybe, right. yeah, I, don't know if, I don't know how we feel about cutting that, but. Oh, that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here's to fucking... a year. Welcome back to episode 53 of Wildly Adequate, the show about anything, everything, and usually nothing. I, as always, am one quarter of your hosting crew, Mr. Matthew Urso, and I am joined by Patrick, Mark, and Malcolm. How's everybody doing? Yeah. I guess I already asked yeah. that. Fuck it. Malcolm, I don't care how any of you are doing anymore. Just take us away. Wait, wait, what was the first thing you said in that whole spiel? I wasn't listening. Ladies and gentlemen, here's to a year. Here's to a year. Wow, how we're celebrating our... Here's our to a year. year. <laughs> All right, guys. That's how we're marking it off on 53-2, just a <laughs> random episode. Uh, Malcolm, please take us away. All right, now, uh, this this topic's been up in the air for a while. It has. I've been, I've been wanting to do it. I don't even know when I brought it up. Maybe, like, in the summer. Easily. Something like that. Uh, but we're doing it today. Mm. We're doing uh, top five favorite Guardians of the Galaxy songs. Mm. All right, let's do it. From the score. Sorry, soundtrack, I should say. The yes. needle yeah. drops. So not, the, so like, not yeah. actual the, soundtrack. Not the like, actual soundtrack. Just uh, the needle drops. I want to. Look what's on the I, wall. I want to start with. Can you zoom you, into? Everyone can do some like honorable wall. honorable mentions if they like before mm. we get into the numbers. Well, Should we go one at a time? Told us this forever ago. You said top ten. 
And yeah. I didn't touch my list since then, so it's just been sitting Perfect. on my computer forever. So since you want to do five now, I'll give you the five, and then I guess I have like five great. honorable mentions. Yeah, I want to do... Should we go like one, go, one, one, one? One honorable we... mention, one honorable mention, like all around? Oh, you want to start with honorable mentions? I want, like everyone can get out some honorable mentions, and then we'll go Let's five, yeah. four, three, two, one, everyone. But are we going to do like five, yeah, five, like five, five, five? Cool. Four, yeah, four, okay. five, cool. four. I will say Unless that... Unless it comes up... <clears throat> Like I mean, if your number five song is my number three song, we might as well just. I feel like we should it at that moment, right? Should we talk? Should we talk about? Should we do uh, honorable mentions after? Because I feel like if we bring up honorable yeah, mentions honorable first, mentions and like, after. like yeah, yeah. Malcolm might do an honorable mention for my one of my top five type That's thing. True. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's do it after. We can start with. Okay. Uh, I, I will say though, I, I have a top fourteen here. Okay. <laughs> and right, so you've got a lot of honorable mentions. And and you don't have to mention them all. Well, I, I'm not saying I will mention them all. I'm just saying, I also don't have my order set. So we're definitely cutting all this out. Because it's not entertaining okay. whatsoever. Okay. Uh, I don't have a set. Who wants to start? Would you like to start, Malcolm? Sure. Yeah, but we, how about we start with Malcolm and go across? My number five spot is Southern Nights by oh, Glenn, Glenn Campbell. Campbell. Classic. That's, Love that that's song. my 13th seed. 13? 13. Yeah. That's crazy. All right, should that's we move on to me? Let's go. So my number five is going to be Wham Bang Shang a Lang, baby. Yep. One that's of my cool. favorites. That's my number eight. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I love that song. It's just so catchy and uh, good time. Maddie? For number five, I'm gonna have to go with "My Sweet Lord" by uh, what's Banger. his face, Jorge George Harrison. Harrison. Yeah, uh, Jorge Harrison. it's just real good. When is it used again? I forget off the top of my head. When? Which one remember. is it in? I think it might be the second one potentially. Is "My Sweet Lord"? I too? think so. You want to? You want to check that and see if it's the second one? <laughs> Malcolm, grab. Yeah, the, grab it. Grab it, Malcolm. Quick. Grab the grab vinyl. Quick. <laughs> also, I'm, I'm gonna go on Spotify and pull it up he for you. Will not. I'm pretty sure it's number two because I remember us having this conversation that number two has like the best soundtrack of the three. No, it is that one. It is that one. Yeah, I was it gonna is. say the more I think about it, the more it's two. It's it must be when I, they get to like it is. It and I remember. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it must be when they get to like egos. Yes, I think whatever. when they're like showing how beautiful it is and whatever. So. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh, my sweet lord, good ass song. <laughs> Great choice. Real good use Great in the movie. Song. All right, Patrick, your number five pick. <sighs> There's just so many good options here. I'm. Yeah, you probably should have done this beforehand, right? But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, Escape. Mm. Escape. What's Escape? Peter Claus. If you song. like Peter oh. Claus, of course, of course. Getting caught in the rain. Yep. All right, Malcolm, your number four. <laughs> and claim. <laughs> my my number four is the chain. Mm. How dare we gotta, you? We gotta. How dare you put that in number four? Okay, here we go. This is just this is the ones I like better. Perfect that. in Guardians Two with the idea of the chain. You know when Fleetwood Mac was like, "Hey, we all fucking hate each other, but also we're making rumors and it's like a dope ass album." And then you get to Guardians Two, and there's the moment in the movie where it's like, "We all hate each other." Yeah. The chain is, you know, mm. very pertinent. So for my number four, I'm gonna go Father and Son. I you think, generally love that. Song. Yeah, it's a beautiful song. I, I, that's what I was. I was thinking of like songs that I just love. Period. Not songs that I I associate with Guardians, because there are some songs like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be totally frank here. I love the chain. Didn't put it in my top five because I love the song without Guardians, and I don't necessarily like connect it to Guardians. It's just a great song to me, and I don't. Um, I guess I'm going against what you I was don't saying. Don't connect it to Guardians. I, I do, but I like can't <clears throat> listen to that song without thinking of spoilers. Like the Yondu death. Spoilers. No, I don't really think about it. Uh, but I was go- I was kind of going against what I was saying. The point is, I'm trying to pick ones that I just straight up love the song. So um, then you should put Chain back. I, w- back I up should. There, right? yeah. But I, I, there's five others I like more than the Chain. But number four, yeah, number four, I'm going to go with Father, father and Son. Okay. Beautiful song. I love, and son. I love the conversation that between the Father and the Son. Mm. It's cool. Uh, for four, I'm going back to Southern Nights. Hmm. Yep. Banger song. How's that one go? Off the top of my head, I also forget. I'll play it and then we can just cut it out. I also forget what movie or which one. I think it was I think it was was two. It's the first one. Is it two? Is it the first one? Bro, it's it's literally number two. Two has the best soundtrack, bro. It it does. It really does. I don't know. Oh, this is a do- I forget yeah. uh, what when in two it happens. I don't even remember. Can someone shit. sing the chorus for me? No. Southern yes, the song's dope. Have you ever I uh, yeah, I can't for the life of me remember where that is in two too. I'm blanking on where these songs fit in. I don't know. All right, Patrick, that? you're number four. <laughs> <laughs> Mark kind of looked at you and he was like, "I'm just gonna ignore that." All right, number four. Patrick. Uh, number four is Dog Days. Mm. Are over. Are over. By, Who's uh, that by? Uh, something in the Machine. Florence in the Machine. Florence in the beautiful Machine. Beautiful song. Gotta be honest, Absolutely beautiful. not crazy about that song. I it's, like its implementation in the end of three. What did you just say? Not crazy about that <laughs> song, but I like it at the end of three. 
I will say though that was I guess because a lot of three soundtrack is good. We're gonna get to some of it on my list. Um, but there was that slight, and I guess I understand that it was part of the movie where it's like, hey, or I guess it was in the holiday special or whatever. Mm. It's like, hey, Chris like, Starlight is a fucking Zune now, so like he has access to like newer music, mm. so, which is why they worked on some of the like '90s and early 2000s stuff. But I was mm. kind of like, stay to the '60s and '70s, James Gunn. What are we doing here? Mm-hmm. How do you feel about him saying he doesn't really like Dog Days Are Over? Wacky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Malcolm, your number. Really unpopular opinion, man. Your number three pick. My number three is Dog Days Are Over. Wow. wow. Back to back. Dude, it's back a great song. Back. It's a beautiful so song. Can so, someone play it? Sure. Can play that. No. Play it. Play it. I really don't want to. I really want to hear it. <laughs> it's really more editing. I, I really want to hear it. He doesn't have to play that much of it. Play a little bit of it. Anything more than five seconds. I five have to seconds, cut bro. Out. Five seconds. Oh my God. Run Count fast for your mother, <laughs> fast for your father. Get a bit of that part. You can just listen to it anytime. I you want to now. Now you're you not know, in the love of my heart. You can't carry it with you if you want to survive. Yep. Yes. Yep. Leave all your that, love that did, in the love behind. So, like so great well. song. Uh, uh, three, Mark. My number three is gonna be um, Lakeshore Drive. Mm. I hate that song. That's not you even hate that song. That's Bro, not even my top the fourteen. Intro, the intro makes it feel like it's gonna be such a good song, and then it gets into it, and I'm just like, this sucks. And Dude, I, I, wow, what I, a scumbag. I love Lakeshore Drive. It's one of my favorite driving songs. Can you play I just that? like sure. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't oh remember. My that. God. Yeah, I got it. One second. <laughs> I haven't even finished editing last week's yet because I've been so busy. So <laughs> I still have to do that topic of cutting all the songs out. Yeah. Intro? Great. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. And I'll go to the singing part where it's not so great. Friday night, summer. Oh, this one's not bad. Uh, Marsh and I were listening to this one time. Love like, this is song. this supposed to be like a subtle drug song? Because at one point, he's talking about LSD. Lakeshore Drive, and they literally say, you know, driving down the LSD. I was like, <laughs> he says, just slipping on by on LSD. I was like, is this a fucking, <laughs> is this a drug? Slipping on by. Dude, those, I love like, it. I, drug it's, so, it's such a chill, cool song. Love it. That's my number three. Mm. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, for my top three, it's more in songs that I like outside of these movies slash in the movies. So, can I guess what your number three is? Please. Actually, I don't want to guess because then it might be number two or one. So this is gonna become uh, slightly more predictable, I guess. But number three, we're gonna go with "Hearts Crazy on You." Mm. Banger. Because that song's a fucking banger, and I just love it in three when fucking dun, Adam Warlock's dun, dun, pulling up the intro. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And it just can we play that real space. quick? No. We're not going to keep playing every song. Sorry, <laughs> you know that song? If you play it, I'll probably remember it. We should play it. If you play it, I'll probably remember it. Oh, no, no. I, I, know. I do remember Adam Warlock, baby. Yeah, and all the fucking memes that it gave us. Yes. Thank you, Guardians 3. Patrick, your number three pick, please. Uh, my number three pick is Come and Get Your Love. <laughs> Classic. Get your love. From number one, I believe. Oh, wow. Come and get your love. Come and get your... Huh? From number one, yes. I think it's from the first it's one. From number one, yeah, I yeah. think is it not in the very? I believe it's right in the beginning scene? when he's, yeah. when he's yeah. walking when he's through, he's the kicking all those little aliens. Yes. Yeah, when he's going after the fucking ball. Right, Can we do a viewing party right now? Let's just shift this topic into viewing Guardians of the Galaxy one. Just watch the Guardians. No, watch along. Malcolm, your number two pick. <laughs> My number two is Father and Son. Mm. Ah, yeah, that's that's number two. That's number two. Yeah. Well, it's there's Can just you tell some, me what that song's about. What it's about. Mark literally just went over what it was about. He didn't, and I'm not gonna do it. He again. didn't he actually did. go over what it's about. <laughs> he didn't go over what it's about. I said it's about a conversation between a father and a son, but it's, it's I just mean, kinda like they're they're kinda like growing apart. Yeah. It's like a sad thing, but he's also happy about it and he's gonna learn a lot. And... I really like the I really like the like the line where it's like, Oh, I have to go away. I just mm-hmm. like this yeah, it's like this like cut, tug of war. Yeah. I, I listen to it a lot in the car really loud and it makes me cry. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's it's really makes you actually cry. makes me actually cry. I, I, sing along, I, sing cry. I sing along to it really loud and it makes me cry. What about it makes you cry? It's just it's just like a sad story. And a happy story. So that's a good song. What's happy about it? All right. That's enough. Mark. <laughs> what do you mean? Like the son going on living his own life and doing what he has to do. Mm. Have you likes? ever heard the song? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I, don't know if he's ever, I don't know if he's ever, <laughs> I don't know if he's ever listened to the lyrics. Or are you the <laughs> F- no, you or are no you he the knows FBI. the song. He's being stupid. I'm not being stupid. So you number, song. my number two yeah. is going to be um, Fooled Around and Fell in Love Fooled by Elvin Bishop. Bishop. That, song, I love that song, when I think of that song, I believe it was like, it's just like him falling in love with Gamora and like looking mm-hmm. at her. That's not in my top fourteen either. Wow. wow. Fooled around and fell in love is a great song. Have you heard of it, Patrick? 
I have. I think I have. Well, when I made this list, I list I literally listened to every single Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy song. That's crazy. They yeah. didn't put that in there. Mm. I love. Uh, I love. I love Elvin Bishop. I love that song. Mm. It's oh, just. Great. I love the romantic vibe of it. It's a stun- It appears to not be so great because it's not even. Oh yeah. It's not even my top fourteen. Oh, like, I'm, we're talking my about fourteen song. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> That's my number two. Number two, I'm gonna toss out and bring us back to the chain, motherfuckers. That's yeah. probably my favorite Fleetwood Mac song ever. Yeah, the um, one uh, live. Uh, uh, at the forum mm-hmm. in LA the is the best really version. Like. Yeah, it's the best just, version objectively. I mm. think that yeah. uh, that song's just really good and like it fits so good. Like I was saying before, in two of like them kind of falling apart as a team and just that using that it works so very well. Can you give us the chorus? No. Okay. Uh, my second is "My Sweet Lord." Mm. I love that song Beautiful so back. much. Yeah, we Appreciate we discovered it before. Yes, Guardians. We yes. did. Mm-hmm. And oh. you hear it, and it's are you like, saying very well known song? I was talking to Mark when I'm I said that. With you. I was talking to Mark when I say. Oh, okay. I'll tune out. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's implying that me and him were like. Well, he oh. showed it. He showed it to me first as well. Oh, I, I, I thought you were saying like yeah. we had all I don't know. heard it beforehand. Oh yeah, yeah, damn. That was years ago. I see what you mean. That must have been like. No, but I think I got it from Guardians because Guardians one came out in 2014. And I'm pretty sure I didn't tell it to you until after 2014. Are you sure? Yeah, 2014, I would have been 13 years old. No. I definitely told it to you after I saw Guardians. This might be you bamboo. Actually, no, wait. No, but Guardians 2 is 27. No, it's Guardians 2. It came out, actually. So, yeah, yeah I think I did tell you before. Yes, Because yes, Guardians yes. 1 didn't have Bro, my gaslighting me? I don't know. Gaslight gatekeep girl. All right. Malcolm, your number one most favorite Guardians of the Galaxy my song of all time. My favorite <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy song is Fooled Around and Fell in Love mm. by yes. Bishop. Good man. Shake not even, not even in patches twenty, not even his top fourteen. Wait, 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 it's crazy. Play it, play it, play it. You know so the good. song. I don't think I do. I don't think you I do. Know it. I don't think I do. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play. It. Maddie, we can just cut this. Like over. I know I do because I listen to all of them, but I can't remember what it sounds like. It's skip, so skip good. To chorus. It's skip to so chorus. good. Oh yeah, not great. I'm just thinking of a Guardians not of the Galaxy. Great. I, not, not oh awesome. my god, it's such a good. I mean, it's good in the Guardians of the Galaxy. It fits perfectly in the scene. I'm pretty sure I remember what scene it was. I think mm. it's like him staring at Gamora. Yeah, sure. that he, when he's on, it's in the second movie for sure. Is, is it? it? No, I think it's in the is, first is movie. This the first one? One? It's the first or second. I forget which one. But yeah, it's a scene no, no, of him yeah, yeah. And it, is, it is the first one. But um, um even hmm, even hmm. apart from Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, it is the first I love one. that um. I don't know. It's kind of like a funny song. He's talking about how he's been with a shit ton of girls, yeah. and then he he's like he's fooling around, and then he, he falls found the, he found the one. Baby. Yeah, love, love, it. love it. So it's my number one is kind of a weird one. Uh, no one has ever. I bet Patrick doesn't even have it in his top fourteen, and I bet none of you guys have it either. But um, it's a song from the number from number three. It's called "Do You Realize." That's my oh, favorite. Yeah. You just played that last week, didn't you? Yeah. So that song, I just I love so much, and when I heard it in three. Like I don't know what I don't know what scene um was playing when that song was playing, but I remember just feeling so moved by it and just like loving the song and I thought it was just like a really sweet song. So yeah, that's, that's my number one. Do you realize? Mm. Love it. Yeah. For my number one, uh I'm going to have to toss out the acoustic version of Creep. Of Creep yeah, uh, I fucking right knew it. In the dude. beginning of Guardians Three. Just because that's one of my like just favorite songs ever. Uh, but I love it so much in three, right in the beginning when Star Rocket. Lord's drunk off his ass and mm. shit and whatever. Um, and just that shot where they're walking through nowhere, like the slow-mo shot of all them walking and one yeah. of those, I think it's Drax, whoever's just fucking carrying Star Lord when he's like conked out or whatever. I just think it sets the tone for three so well of like, and I mean, I guess no one like dies from the Guardians kind of thing, but like all the rocket flashback stuff. It just sets the kind of tone of like, this is like still Guardians and fun, but like, a little more serious, dude. Like three a is so more good. Dramatic, a little more kind of, you know. It's also the end mm. of the Guardians as we know it and all that shit. So, uh, yeah, good, good tone setter, and then just you know, good ass song. Thank you, Radiohead. Dude, just as a side note, like the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy is like the best trilogy in the MCU, and to me, it's like I'm so sad that it's over. But I like how perfect the package is. How many trilogies are in the MCU? Thor, Thor, Captain America, Iron Man. Well, it's hard Spider-Man. to count some of them because, like, Thor's now on four movies. So mm. it's like, unless you just count the first three. And, and then uh, Spider-Man and then has three. It's like but four the, movies. By far, it's my favorite trilogy. And I feel like James Gunn nailed it. And it's like a perfect package of three movies. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Patrick, Patricia. your number one pick. 
My number one pick. Here we go. My number one pick. Do you guys can you guys guess it? Father or and son. <laughs> you think it's father and son? Maybe. What do you think, Mahan? I think it's father and son. You think not? What was the other <laughs> one? Uh we already did come and get your love. What's the other one I'm thinking of? What's the other one you're thinking of? I oh. can't stop this feeling. Oh, hooked on a feeling. Called? Hooked on a feeling. Hooked on a feeling. Hooked on a feeling. That's pretty There's good. no way that's your number one. My number one, ladies and gentlemen, is The Chain, baby. Mm. The yes. Chain is number one. The Chain is number Let's one, Let's get it. I love that song so much. Chain. I just have, in the summer, rolling down my windows, nice and warm out, mm. <laughs> yelling that song at the top of my lungs, driving down, uh, what's the road called? Lower Baseline. Is that <laughs> sure. okay for me to say? Yeah. That's fine. Oh my god, bro! In the wilderness, it's I can't tell you how I get the exact. I do the exact same thing with that song. It's summertime, the the guitar solo comes on, windows down, and just <laughs> full speed. Mm-hmm. So, I I, I want to hear some uh, honorable mentions now. You guys, guys want to go one by one? List a couple oh, of honorable sure. mentions. Sure. sure. Yeah, just rattle some off for us. So, for, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one out right away. <clears throat> Moon Age da- Moon Age Daydream by um, David Bowie. I love a lot. Mm. I don't think anyone said this one. Did anyone say Brandy? No. no oh, my God. Brandy. I remember How did I, was, I not say Brandy, bro? Not in your top 14? It's my top 14. Oh, when okay. I was making, just because I have it up on the thing there, when I was making my 10, I didn't put Brandy in the top 10, and I remember that being such a soul-crushing thing to have to do, where I was mm. like, fuck, I really want to put What Brandy beat out Brandy? Uh, well, the five honorable mentions I have are Escape, Hooked on a Feeling, uh, Wham Bam, shang lang Come and get your love and father and what about what about Mr. Blue Sky? Mr. Blue Sky no, is in my Blue Sky is another one that was tough to it's cut from the beginning of two because <laughs> that just whole scene goes, of them fighting. It goes so the perfectly with awesome. Groot just dancing at the beginning. Yeah, him baby yeah. Groot just running around then, while they're fighting then, that big fucking. So cute. I'm gonna throw out uh Ooh Child. Things are gonna mm-hmm. get easier. Mm-hmm. And then also Fox on the Run. Yes, love Fox, Fox on the Run. Fox on the Run's another good one. No one mentioned um Hooked on a Feeling. We just did. As an honorable mention, like you mentioned feeling, it, but that it would have been in the top ten, but it didn't quite crack the five. That's Dude, a good one. You know which one is great? I think you like the song "Bring It On Home to Me" by Sam Cooke. Oh, I love that song. That yeah. song is great. You know that song, Patrick? Uh, I think I do. Yeah, I can't really recall how it goes, but okay. <laughs> yes, that's all. Beautiful song. <laughs> what else do we got here? Um, come a little bit closer. Mm. Come a little um, Patrick, bit closer. Patrick, you got my fucking kind of man. nine. Ones no, no, no. We mentioned we mentioned half of them in your top fives and in the. There's nothing on it. That there's hasn't nothing been that hasn't been yet. said. Since did someone mention this one since you've been gone? No, no one mentioned that one. Oh, okay. Downs from three, great song. Since you've been gone is on here. That's an honorable I mention. Guess, That's I guess it. We did it. We mentioned everything. I like, else. Uh, we covered what's everything. that song by? Oh, this is the day by the the. That one's great. <clears throat> I really like that song. This is the day. Yeah, great song. Mm. All right, cool. That's about it for this. We love Guardians, there baby. Go. We Guardians love the Guardians of the Galaxy. Good ass trilogy. <laughs> Banging needle drops. All right, can uh, you zoom for in? For a thumbnail, oh. can we get Groot and then, like, <laughs> I don't know if anyone saw that meme. We can cut this out. Mm. Um, but it's uh, a little girl's, like, she's, like, sucking on a tree. There's, like, a little branch coming out of the tree. Oh, and then you no, go to the can't. comments and it's Groot just giving a smile. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Groot smiling. That's hilarious. She's getting the maple syrup straight from the source. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. That's about, evil it. And that's about it. Well, there you go, fellas. On with the show. All right, I want to talk about. Um, I want to talk about movies, but specifically, I want to talk about movies that have, like, really impacted us, and like, we just it hit us really deep, and like, you thought about it for days afterwards. You son of a bitch. <laughs> was that your topic? Not for tonight, but eventually, I was going to do a topic that I just called "Art That Touched You" and do like movies, games, ah. movies, or uh, I said movies twice. Movies, games, music, kind of thing. But okay. I like this, so this is good. Cool. Movies. So yeah, I just want to talk about a movie that you. Yeah, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I, I I'm so sorry to cut you off. It's okay. You see how you what you just did there? <laughs> yeah. I envy you for that. You went this. And then you went back in. I yeah. envy you for that. Go on, Mark. I'm so sorry. So, uh, yeah, Patrick's, for you guys who don't know, um, which why would you? Uh, Patrick's, <laughs> Patrick's mic arm is kind of stiff, so it doesn't really spin but that yours easily. Yours being stiff doesn't have anything to do with it. Yours, the problem is mine's straight up, and then it's in the... Th- uh, cl- uh, oh, is it because it's attached to this thing? That... Because yours is, the clamp is down, mm. yours can only go like... Mm. Certain- mm. We're going to need to fix that. We're going to so fix that. Technically, if we had another table like this and yours was clamped... We're going to need to fix that, right? The right way, then you'd be able to... Do you hear what I said? Mike. So we oh, sure. do it on here, or we got... 
I'm gonna put One mine the, on. We oh, tested yeah. the clamp with mine. It fits on the couch arm, so we might be able to do yours literally just right on the arm, and then mm. uh, Marks can go on the nice. table too. Mm. But if you want, yeah, maybe we'll get like a not this exact same table probably, but like we can get another small shitty foldable one and then that way you'd be able to have some wiggle room anyways mark go on yeah so i guess i just want to talk about movies that we've watched that we woke up the next morning and it was just sitting in our brains um for me recently i watched a movie called incendies which is one of the best movies i've ever seen in my entire life um directed by denis villeneuve who directed like blade runner 2049 both Mm. dune movies prisoners Mm. arrival one of my favorite movies ever and i think it's my favorite movie it is i think incendies is a masterpiece it's beautiful. Like the themes are really like it kind of touches on themes of like hatred and anger, uh, but then conversely like love and family and that sort of stuff. And like there's so much crazy shit that goes on in that movie. And I woke up the next morning and I just like well after I watched it, I watched it late and I just like laid in my bed and just like stared up, just thinking about it for like an hour. Like the ending hits you so hard, and there's a lot of like dramatic twists and crazy shit going on. Um. The music is beautiful too. They play a lot of Radiohead. I mean, not a lot. They play like using Who's Army in the beginning and they play it a little bit throughout the movie. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to go into it too much because it's on the wheel, uh, our movie wheel. So um, I want you guys to experience what, what happens in it. I can't really describe why it hit me so deep. But um, yeah, it's just really de- it's just really sad and has a lot of like beautiful moments as well. So that movie just like <coughs> completely touched me and I, um, I think I'm going to think about it for a long time. I immediately like sat down and wrote like a two page review on it just like writing all my thoughts on it and i don't really do it that often only for movies that like like blow me away um yeah also it's french it's all in french because uh, denis is french canadian um it takes place in montreal and stuff cool. but the, the whole premise of it i'll just throw the premise out just so you guys hear something about it is basically like these twins they're in their like 20s one guy one girl and the beginning of the movie they're being given um a will from their mother who just passed away one one uh, she gives them two letters one letter says to your brother and then the other one says to your father um so in that moment they they actually didn't know that they had another brother they thought it was just them two but in that letter it says like one one she, like she, your mom wants you to deliver one letter to your brother and one to your father who they've never met either of them the father has been out of the picture and and the brother they never knew existed so they travel to the middle east i believe it's uh, either um i think it's like palestine or something either that or um Lebanon or something but basically they, they travel back home to try to find their father and their brother and once they do that once they do that the person uh, who's responsible for her will said that your mom wanted you to deliver these letters and then she'll give you like her final letter to you too so the whole movie is just like them learning about their mother's past by going back to her original village and stuff like that and just like finding about about finding out about horrific shit that she went through and um yeah a lot of wild stuff happens but it's a beautiful movie sounds cool yeah, so that that's Incendies, mm-hmm. and that movie just like blew me away. And yeah, so I want to hear about <coughs> movies that you guys have watched that, just like for one reason or the other, you were just, it was just made you really emotional, or just you couldn't stop thinking about it. One, I can't think of a lot like in the past, but recently, has anyone here ever seen The Notebook? No, I no, I have an idea. I, Isabel, Isabel kind of pushed me to watch it last week, and I really didn't want to because I'm like that's just some like chick flick, some like mm. kind of thing, and but it ended up being really, really good. Mm. And is that the Ryan Gosling one? Yeah, yeah. this was Ryan Gosling. That's, that's what kind of convinced something? me. I was like, I don't want to watch it. She goes, it has Ryan Gosling though. Mm. I was like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Isn't it where he like loses his memory or something? Or is that a different? Yeah, so movie? Yeah. it's kind of like that. Mm. It is like just the other way. Oh, so I see. The movie starts with this. This old guy is at this what seems like like a retirement home with a lady who has Alzheimer's or dementia. I don't know which one it is. She can't remember. She doesn't remember anything. And he's reading her this story. It's called the Notebook. And in the Notebook, he he's it's the stories about a young guy that meets a young girl and this girl just doesn't want to go out with him but he's like it sounds bad he's forcing himself on her <laughs> not in that way but he's kind of, he's being pushy with like like to go out with persistence him. You know what verbatim I mean? he's being very pers- persistent verbatim from the movie <laughs> is uh, it what is it verbatim from the movie what? forcing himself on yeah her? no okay uh why would being, you choose to describe it that way then it's funny that way okay <laughs> um He's pushing him. He's just like pushing for her to go out with him, without out with him, and eventually she just agrees, and they end up having like a really good time. And the whole summer they're just going out with each other, twenty four seven, and it's just like a very like cute lovey dovey summer romance kind of thing. The end of the summer comes and she has to like choose between going to school in New York and staying there to stay with him, 
and her mom forces her to go to New York and he's really he's really upset by it and right at the end they get a really big fight and right before she leaves so she they don't even get to see each other before she leaves and so he writes her you know I, I want to watch this movie by the way so are you spoiling it right now what are you doing right now? are you giving us an <laughs> option? No, I <laughs> he's saying I don't no you don't <laughs> I don't why I'm gonna finish <laughs> wait 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 you're actually spoiling it for us right do you now wanna, do you actually want to watch it yes you actually want to watch it <laughs> do you get, are you guys not on the same page uh, I don't really care to watch it but if you want to watch it then yeah it's fine you you're not on the thing. same page. If it was on the wheel or something, I'd watch it happily. Why wouldn't you put it on a wheel, on the wheel if it touched you this uh, this much? I just wash it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying this wheel. This wheel's already set and done. I just wash it. I don't need to wash it again anytime soon. <laughs> Bro, t- I, c- I don't even want to have this argument. <laughs> we get it takes months to get through a wheel at this point. Exactly. By that time, you're gonna forget what I said. There you go. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to continue or no? Continue. Okay. <laughs> and so, for a year straight after she leaves, he writes her 365 letters. All of which the girl's mother takes away and doesn't give to her. And so after Oh, so that, she's gatekeeping. She's gatekeeping. So the girl completely forgets about Ryan Gosling. How and could she? one day Ryan Gosling's in her city and he was like w- just walking around and he sees her with a new man oh, and she's no. engaged. He had she has a ring on, she's all happy, blah blah blah. He knock, then, he knocks her out, right? Hmm? Like he knocks, he knocks her, her out. out. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, does not knock her out. <coughs> she goes, um, she loses her memory from that. You guys were you guys said that so nonchalant. It, it, it goes on like the, it goes on like this little story where Ryan Gosling's losing it. His dad dies. He buys a new house. He does the house up super nice to like be exactly how she described it. Bro, that's as she so wanted. Cr- that's kind of crazy. That is, that she crazy. wanted it to be when they were dating in the summer, mm. and he's just living on his own. He's kind of a bum. He drinks a lot. He grew out his hair. He looks he looks he looks terrible. And one day, this is this is sad. One day, his the, life ended one day with this the, woman. One day in the paper, she sees, she sees a picture of Ryan Gosling standing in front of this crazy house that he just built up, and she just has she has to go see him. She's in New York. She goes down to wherever they are. And she's know, engaged. Like, she's engaged. She goes down. She tells her husband, "I just have to figure some stuff out," and he goes, "Okay." Um, she goes down there. <laughs> She goes down there, realizes she loves Ryan Gosling more than anything ever. What, what, she what's, cheats, what's on, the, what's cheats on her husband yeah, a whole lot. Wait, 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 like wait, a wait, lot. wait, wait, wait. I thought she forgot about him completely. <coughs> she did not. You said you, you said a year later she, she like, forgot about her like she, Ryan Gosling. Like she like forget about him. Like he mm. didn't write. Like me, she moved on. She uh, moved on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, so she, she uh, cheats on him a whole lot. Okay. Mm. Wow. This is the movie where Ryan Gosling goes. What do you want? That's right. exactly. That's it. Yeah. Tell me what you want. In the rain. It's raining. He's doing that. Everything's more dramatic when it's raining. And. Whatever, so how many times did she cheat on him again? Hmm? How many times did she cheat on him again? A lot. I don't know. Her <laughs> husband. A lot. Um, you know what's a better question? Who gives a shit? Go ahead. <laughs> um, how many times? Ends of the movie. Well, three, comes, and, she, three would be interesting, but four would not be interesting. Like what? I'm just, I'm just playing she, she has to choose between like getting with her husband or getting like who's the right mm. man to be with for her. Mm-hmm. Eventually, she ends up choo- choosing Ryan Gosling. She should have lost both. Wow. All right. She should have <laughs> lost both. How she can you be with a woman up, like she that? She ends up choosing Ryan Gosling, and then yeah. we go back to the old people. And it turns out the old woman is her from the movie, except yeah. she's a lot older. And the man is Ryan Gosling. And he's reading this. He reads this story to her every single day because he just wants her to remember what happened when they were young. He mm. just wants her to remember him. Mm. And she just want, he, he's trying so hard. She doesn't recognize her kids. Mm. She doesn't recognize her family. They visit oh. every day. They're like, Dad, will you just move home? She just doesn't remember anything. Let her live on her own. Mm. And he goes, I can't do that. I need to stay with her. And she, so he stays with her every single night in that retirement home. And it's so sad because mm. he has to pretend that he's not the, her husband because she'll get oh. freaked out. Like, who are you? Why are you touching me? Get away. She'll start screaming. Mm. And only every every couple weeks she'll remember for like five minutes who she is mm. and she'll remember the story. She goes, oh my gosh, mm. I remember you. I love you so much. And then mm. they could, in one scene, they were like dancing and stuff. Mm. And then just out of the nowhere, she goes, who are you? Mm. And she starts screaming and losing it. Mm-hmm. And oh, it was... It really, it really hit me. Really, I tried so hard not to cry in front of Isabel, <laughs> but it hit me so hard, and it just made me think a lot about how, like, how scary it is to grow old with somebody you love, and how these things are completely plausible. They can happen to anybody, and it's just, I don't know, it's just it's such a ser- scary thing, and love such a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dementia is definitely. I, I've said this multiple times. I think if I ever get to that place where like, I can't remember Shoot anything, me in the face, what? just like end me. <laughs> 
Yeah, shoot. Take just, me, just take end me, me. Out. Take me out. Honestly, there's no it, reason it be, for my family to, to know nobody around. There, you. Th- there's no reason for my family to cling on. Like if they I will, can't they remember will. anything, they will though. It's just an Egyptian thing, bro. I'm gonna put it's, on my will. A, put it on my will. <laughs> please end me. Like, I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't know if you can put that. Can you put that in your will? Please kill me. <laughs> if it, I, I'm going to find some sort of the legal whole point of the will that when you're gone. Then Sorry, it's like I miss. I, I use the wrong term. Up. I use the wrong term. I'm going to sign some sort of document. Right. That stipulates if I'm ever in that position, you you end me. Yeah. You I think, honestly, I think it would be agreement. I think it would be shitty for a family to, to read that and be like, oh, he wanted this to happen. If he ever lost his memory, he said he wanted to be like, you know, put out of his misery. And then, like them, not honor that. It's like that's what you want. That's selfish. I like, know, it's they're, very selfish. they're they're keeping what they're keeping my shell for what? Yeah, but it's and very... also also I'll, I'll be a financial burden on them. For yeah, what? but also it's it's very it's a very common thing for um, at the very least. I know I know for a fact like the the Egyptian mindset. It's like they hold on to family so close mm-hmm. that they would make that selfish decision sometimes to just like keep the person around even mm-hmm. though they're not like suffering. W- or yeah. sure it was, not that I would know. It's a hard decision, sure. anyways. Like for a family to be like, all right, yeah, like. Sure, we're gonna that's, put true. Him down. that's true, that's true. We're gonna put Patrick Damn. down. Today we're putting Patrick down. You want to come? <laughs> you want to come? <laughs> okay, so I'm we got all three movies <laughs> off real quick. Sure. Um, the first one, not a bit, genuine fact, uh, and I mentioned it on the show multiple times now, a little film called 1995's, or was it four, Godzilla vs. Destroyer. This is the one where he mm. dies at the end. We've talked about it before. I've shown you the scene with the sad mm-hmm. music. Um, that movie makes me cry watching him die every single time. Mm. It feels like it's That movie makes you cry? Yes, straight up. Like this, not like I'm bawling, but it is like the you know couple like single tears of like when he dies at the end and the fucking music's playing because it's such a beautiful song. Nothing makes you cry. I know because I'm broken because it is like it feels like watching a family member die like straight up. It's just so <laughs> heartbreaking. Um, but that's just a quick one. Two other ones that come to mind is uh, one one of my all time faves, a little movie called Saving Private Ryan. Mm. I know for oh, war yeah. movies, some people would toss out you know Platoon or Can fucking. We- apocalypse now or some shit like that um can we put that on the wheel i would do it because i haven't watched it in so long saving fight ryan yeah i've never seen it i'm pretty sure what we, i tried to watch it with you patrick like once like on netflix party like, i think two i years fell ago. asleep you literally like, fell asleep after 10 minutes wow. I, I tried texting the mess like chat the whole time did get a single thing <laughs> i think Why did i have it in my head you guys had all well, i've never seen it i had it in my head that like everybody had seen it a couple I had times seen, i fucking have to put i've seen on. like a scene or two because my brother had a high school project when he was in like the 12th grade to like watch it and write an essay on it or it's something. incredible it's Fuck, so good nah, so, so i was like in elementary school like and i walked over and i saw like some guy's arms getting blown off and i was like i'm out of here well, Maddie, sure I, was, I forgot about how sad that movie was. i have to put it on the wheel now because well i mean i won't spoil some things like mm-hmm. i was going to talk about it but yeah i just think that movie's so shout out my main man mr steven spielberg it's so like horrifying in its realism in the way it approaches world war ii where it's not like this is an action movie and blah 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 blah. like it's way more just like oh this is like horrifying as shit i mean the fucking opening 20 30 minute scene on d-day of them storming the beach is like such that was a scary haunting shit like when uh, Tom Hanks gets off the boat immediately and like his hearing's all fucked, which they do throughout the movie. And like there is the shot where he watches like the one guy that's like totally shell shocked, just like walking with an arm missing. Mm. And he's just like nonchalantly like picking it up off the yeah. ground because that guy fucking doesn't know where he is right now kind of thing. Mm. And there's like people just like praying and like crying mm. for their fucking moms and shit. And it's like so horrifying. And I mean, I don't want to spoil it now, but there's like. There's one specific scene towards the end of the movie and like with the final battle um, that Uh is to this day, I have watched tons of violent stuff like, you know, or played violent video games. Doesn't really phase me. Like, sure, you see like a horror movie or something sometimes and it's like, you know, like that guy's fucking head got lopped off or whatever. But there's just one scene at the end of it involving a knife fight. Um that's I almost like I usually I don't want to like oversell this selling I'm being dramatic but like I can't watch it like I find myself like conveniently pulling out my phone or like <laughs> going to pee when it happens and just letting it run because it's so it's hard to it's watch really I don't know how to describe uncomfortable it. to watch like it's really visceral in how and again it's not like somebody gets their head lopped off or something like there's not even any really blood to it it's just very like real in quotes and like how that fucking shit would actually go down um 
So Saving Private Ryan, good shit. Uh, the second quick one I was just going to toss out, going back to The Goss for a completely different reason. He's the king of rom-coms. So. Fucking La La Land. I mean, oh, get beautiful. the fuck out of here. In terms of movies that I think about mm. constantly mm. and that just live in my head rent-free, let alone the music, mm. which I listen to every once in a while because the score is so good. But, mm. like, you know, shots, moments. We've talked about the end of the movie before on the show yes. and how powerful I think uh, the final scene is there but there's just so much in that movie that i'll find myself just like sitting and kind of thinking about for mm. completely different reasons from you know the horrors of war mm. yeah. patricia yeah the goss is uh i said rom-coms uh incorrectly um uh, chick flicks he's the king of chick flicks sure you think yeah, yeah. i don't know i don't really know what else he's in other than the notebook notebook la la land it's not really a rom-com no, I it's misspoke when I said rom com. It's not a chick flick either. Yeah, definitely <coughs> not a chick flick. You don't think it's a chick flick? Barbie's no. a big old chick flick, huh? I, I thought romance. More. I thought romance movies were chick flicks. I don't. I don't. Know. It all I, blends together. It's kind of like more. I mean, there's yeah, there's romance, there's drama. It's like comedy. There's a bit of comedy, and uh, yeah, it's, I feel like it's a movie for everybody. To be honest, he's in there's one some that I that are, forget. My dad was just watching the other day, but it's like Steve Carell. Julianne Moore, him, Emma Stone, Crazy in it Stupid too. Love. Yeah, that's it. Crazy Stupid Love. That he's like. I've heard it's really actually a good, good. movie. It yeah. is. It's cute because like Steve Carell and Julianne Moore like get divorced mm. right at the beginning of the movie, mm. and then when Steve Carell's going to a bar, he bumps into Ryan Gosling, who's a less <laughs> evil version of, of Andrew like, Tate. A Barney Stinson. <laughs> I think it's Andrew Tate. Where like he's like all he does is go to the bar, just hit on and like bang chicks, and then when he meets Steve Carell, he's basically like, "Hey, I know you got this divorce, so I'm gonna help you like." You know, score. There's a scene and that I've seen. Scores with Marissa Tomei, so it's Damn. like Steve Carell. There's a, there's a scene that I've seen from that movie all the time on Instagram, and it's like basically Ryan Gosling's character, like all in a suit and dress shoes mm-hmm. and all that shit, mm-hmm. and Steve Carell's wearing like this like striped polo and like New Balances, like these like gray old dad New Balances, and he like makes fun of them and like throws them, and I'm like that's hilarious because now now those New Balances would be like dope, like those are like <laughs> cool cool shoes now. Uh, I love yeah. New Balance but, shoes. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, there's. <sighs> I feel like there's just so many movies that have touched me over the years. It's so hard to pick some of them, so I'm just going to go with my recency bias. Mm. Um, A Bronx Tale. Mm. A Bronx Tale is one of those movies where there isn't much action, quote-unquote, but you're on the edge of your seat throughout Mm. the whole movie. I found myself on the edge of the seat throughout the whole movie. I was locked in, so Mm. to speak, in today's Mm. tongue. Um and there's something to be said there's something to be said in my opinion about movies that follow just follow someone's life mm. but in following their life they explore various themes like for example in uh bronx tale exploring the idea of racism in what was it the uh when was it said? bronx oh uh like the 50s or 60s. was it 50s or 60s something like that 60s yeah, it came out in the 90s but it was addressing the 50s mm. and 60s right yeah yeah, so they explored racism. They explored the idea of, uh, you know, gangsters, the mob. Um, he, Father, fatherhood. Exactly. Like I was about to say, like, role models in a sense of, like, you know, who to look who to look up to and sort of different worldviews on... What it is to be a man. Exactly. Thank you for mm-hmm. helping me fill in that, that gap there. But it's i just recommend that movie to anybody just great, great watch movie. it it's really good it's so it's so good man you might have to throw out another movie or two go for it um <laughs> i mentioned denny villeneuve who and he also did arrival and arrival is one of those movies for me as well um we've all seen arrival right mm-hmm. yeah we all watched it yeah so spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen that movie and wants to watch that movie but just like that music that they play called like daylight I'm gonna, can i just play it for like two seconds it was like orchestra sounding one yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll play it as you see you guys know it the um, symphonic sounding one we'll cut this cut this cut this cut this cut that cut that cut that cut that right. mm. mm. damn it this one mm. yeah so sad boy music. it's just a beautiful and sad song and the movie opens with her running around uh, the main character she's running around following her daughter who's dressed up as a cowgirl and is like walking around like being cute and stuff and and it kind of goes through like the very first opening scene. It's like her playing with her daughter or her, her daughter being born and her being like, oh, like come back to me. And she takes her daughter. And then it's like her daughter growing up and then being a kid and then being a teenager and being like, I hate you. And like going through the stages of life and then ends with her daughter, like in the hospital bed, like with cancer and she's like dying. And like the main character says, like, come back to me. Just like she said it when it was, a, when she was a baby, she's like kind of holding her dead body being like, come back to me. And 
then the movie starts and she's like a professor like a linguistic professor and like this whole alien invasion happens like the movie centers around this alien invasion and you think at first that this is just like her past like her, her with her daughter and everything like that and then you learn that like the aliens came to like teach humanity this like this language and once they learn the alien language they can perceive time differently they can perceive time like non-linearly like they can see it as a circle they can see the beginning the end the middle all of it so you find out that the, one of the guys the scientists that she meets on this expedition to like learn about the aliens is her future husband whom she has the daughter with who ends up dying and so like it's this beautiful thing where it's like so bittersweet that she falls in love with this with this guy this physicist while she's trying to like decode the alien language she falls in love with him and has kid has this kid with him and like has a beautiful relationship with him but he ends up leaving her and like divorcing her because he finds out eventually that she knew that their daughter was going to die when they had her but she made that decision to be with him and have the daughter anyway so like that that idea of me of like that idea of her knowing that she was having a kid that was destined to die and still choosing to do it anyway because she loved him so much and because she loved her, the daughter so much kind of like talks about i guess like how the journey of life is the most important thing not where things end up and she like made that sacrifice and he didn't he couldn't forgive her for it's so like that that whole thing when i when you see that twist of her seeing time differently and like how it impacted her family just like that like could freak me out and i was like this is crazy so that movie's really good and then there's um in the grand budapest hotel mm -hmm. there's this one scene where like um i realize i'm not looking at malcolm ever <laughs> but there's there's this one scene where um the main the guy who plays voldemort what's his name ralph uh, ray fines yeah so he plays like the the main concierge of the hotel and at one point he gets like framed for a murder right and they send him to jail and zero who um plays um flash in, in the tom holland spider-man movies mm -hmm. he's like his like right hand man and he comes to like break him out of the prison so they meet him outside the prison and he was zero was supposed to bring mr mustafa's his name he was supposed to bring him like perfume and like new clothes and whatever and he like screwed up he like forgot to bring everything and mustafa like lays mr mustafa lays into him being like you're an idiot like what, what, like, and all this stuff being like oh like what what could i have expected from someone who's like not even from this country kind of like being racist against him because he's from like uh he's, he's, he's an immigrant from a different country and then after he, he, he kind of lashes out about that zero goes through this story of, of how he like he had to leave his country because of war and how his, his parents were killed and how his siblings were killed and all this stuff and how like that's why he's here and he's like he's more of a refugee and like he's explaining his story and mr mustafa feels like an asshole and he like kind of like swears himself and he's like I'm a piece of shit. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you're my brother and I love you and all these things. And it's like, it makes me cry every single time. It's not even that, um, like, dramatic of a scene necessarily, but just witnessing someone wrong, like, wrong one of his friends and be man enough to admit it and to apologize for it and to call himself a jackass and be like, I was in the wrong. And then seeing Zero, like, accept him with open arms and be like, it's okay. Like, I understand. It was just a beautiful moment. So, those two movies, in addition to Incendies, are, are uh, ones that, like, just stuck with me that scene from grand budapest arrivals uh, the idea of like her having her daughter that she knew that she was going to die and uh, and cindy's is just beautiful as well and you guys will see why like i can't wait to watch that movie i have, I have a couple more to list off um life of pi was one of them mm, when i watched when i was little not, not like it was a very sad movie when i was little i just i was shocked like a kid alone on a boat mm. he's watching his parents sink in this ship to the bottom of the ocean it's just super scary and it kind of just like mm. makes me realize like i should be grateful for where mm. i am what i have another one is seven mm. i've I, I never seen I it put that seven, i what didn't put seven box? on the wheel no um, i want to so, watch it so bad though <clears throat> it was an incredible movie the end of it just it it, it shocked me mm. big time with brad pitt i love brad pitt so much oh god um bradley and then <clears throat> another one is inception mm. In, Ince <laughs> in Inception, I'm, I'm sure you guys know, I love the song Time by mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer mm -hmm. from the soundtrack. And when it's paired together with Leonardo DiCaprio, he's built this kind of like safe haven in his dreams where his he has this image of his wife and the good times they had together. And he just, he can't let go of it. And in order to move on with what he wants to do in his life, he needs to let go of it, but it's the hardest thing for him to do. And he's trying so hard to let go. And it's just, I just, oh my gosh, it's hey, a very emotional of, scene. That reminds me of Shutter Island too. Yeah. Because when I was thinking of Leo, like Shutter Island and like 
whole, the whole thing with his his wife drowning the kids and all this stuff and like him realizing that he was actually like a mental patient the whole time like yeah that's crazy for a couple other ones you mentioned inception with nolan interstellar's one mm. for me oh my god um and even though recently oppenheimer might be my favorite thing of his now interstellar's if not for oppenheimer would be my favorite nolan thing i just think that movie it's like you know in terms of how do movies impact us it's different from like I'm, it, it doesn't really make me sad or anything i mean i guess maybe at the end when he's in the fucking like space bookshelf um but like <clears throat> interstellar is just so cool and interesting and i have like such a fascination with space and the way it takes such a like grounded approach to it of like you know yeah, like if you do light speed and all this like crazy different shit, like time fucking works really differently. Dude, I remember being like, holy shit, when they leave to like do this mission and they yeah. come back and that one guy who was like stuck waiting on the ship was like all gray and old and he's like, I've been here for 15 years or whatever. And they're like, it was like an hour for us. Yeah. And like crazy. him getting like when they go into the black hole and all that shit's awesome. The fucking like cameo and then whole like storyline with matt damon when they just find oh him on yeah the other that was and crazy like, oh like yeah, yeah you're here and he's like going to show them stuff and he tries to fucking Piece like kill shit. matthew mcconaughey and <laughs> the it's soundtrack like, is the just fuck? beautiful too the man. fucking hans zimmer soundtrack is just you know nolan and hans zimmer they go together like pb and j mm-hmm. um so interstellar is definitely one um just some quick ones to rattle off there's a few comic book movies that are very impactful to me for a couple different reasons i was going to mention it's funny because i mentioned it last week uh but like the raimi spider-man trilogy specifically uh spider-man 2 of course just in the sense of like how important that was to me as a child of just like watching that fucking movie over and over again and just being like this is you know anything and everything a child would want um and there's some other comic book movies that are in that realm for me i guess they'd be newer ones but like it's a combination of like they were, you know, really good theater experiences and also just like giving me as such a comic dork, giving me everything the Batman I ever kind of wanted. The Batman is one of those on that short list. We're just like watching that was like such a fucking revelation. Dope ass movie. I love The Dark Knight. I love, you know, Batman 89. Like I love those movies as Batman movies, but there's just something about the Batman that's like so perfect just exactly what i want from are you batman are you shit. saying that it's better than the christian bale batman i am wow. i like it better than the dark knight me too but it's like i just find where it's like the suit the look the city the cast the story the music the like fucking main theme there the like totally just like the nirvana shit we're Love going it. in this like more detective noir like it is a murder mystery sort of i mean you know it's the riddler kind of early but it is like it pulls a little bit from seven it pulls a little bit from saw yeah. with like all the fucking crazy traps that like the riddler's putting people in it's so good um, it's so it's amazing good. it Dude. does the thing that like you know against a movie like spider-man 3 or the amazing spider-man movies was always like even some of the more recent marvel stuff where it's like boy you guys tried jamming in like everything in the kitchen sink with this but i just love its approach to like it's batman the riddler's the bad guy and it's all these different little pieces that aren't like – it's not like Spider-Man 3 where it's like Sandman is the main villain of this movie and New Goblin is the main villain of this movie. And we're doing the entire symbiote and Venom storyline who's also the main villain of this movie. Mm. With Batman, it is more like, no, it's him trying to solve the Riddler's thing, but – we get him in Gordon's relationship. We get him in Alfred's relationship. We introduce Catwoman. There's, introduce but there's Penguin this, like, and, and Falcone. Proto, like proto-Penguin and Falcone. But you get all these like elements to it but it's not like that like, fill in the world and like this version of Gotham mm. without it being like... And then there's the big boss fight against Penguin. And then there's the big boss fight against Falcone. And mm. then there's the big thing with Riddler and like mm. Catwoman. It's like, no, these are all just like little nuggets it's so perfect in this dude. world but yeah. it's like there's still the main through line they set it up really well for another movie or two yes know? which and the fact that it got delayed my heart Sad. aches um but and i'm then, also glad that they're taking their time with it yeah too. it's like take your time uh and then just quickly some mcu stuff uh infinity war and endgame just as like theater experiences are things i will never forget of how like fun i don't think i've ever had more fun in a theater mm-hmm. ever than watching those two because it was basically just it was kind of like watching somebody i mean it literally was doing something for 10 years and then having it pay off about as perfectly as you could have 
possibly asked for um and how much they nailed that and uh the other mcu thing i would just mention would be like kind of no uh sorry spider-man homecoming um but specifically civil war because that was another thing where for me it's just specifically the whole movie's great but the spider-man stuff mm-hmm. where it was like in captain america civil war yeah where it's like the raimi trilogy awesome then we get the amazing spider-man movies which i don't really like all that much andrew garfield and emma stone are great but like you know the rest of those movies are kind of fucking whack um and then it was like you know the announcement of like hey sony and marvel are gonna like work their shit out and they're gonna put spider-man in the mcu and it was like awesome and then you know in the months and years leading up to it, it's like, we get Tom Holland cast and yada, yada, yada. And then it was just the fucking scene in the movie. Like, I, again, will never forget being in the theater for the first time watching Civil War. And when they're like, Tony's talking about like recruiting people and it's just hard cut to just New York and fucking Queens pops up on the thing. And just the instant like mm. happy nerd tears and the chills of like, oh my God, they're finally fucking doing it. And then it's, you know, the scene where they're at like Peter and May's apartment, which is all well and good. But then when you finally get to the airport scene, which is just mm. one giant orgasm for me for however long that scene is, oh my goodness. when you get to that, finally you get to that moment of like when they're kind of going after cap and mm. they're like, it's clear that it's going to go down. It's the fucking, you know, under ruse. And he fucking just comes swinging in and takes the shield from him mm. lands. And it's just the suits. Perfect. The performance is perfect. The look is great. It's everything a happy boy like me would want. I have one more movie, but I can save because I've been talking a lot, so please rattle off more movies. Patrick? Huh? All right, going. Matt, you take it away. Uh, Jaws, my favorite movie of all time. I think in a lot of ways it's the reason I am where I am right now in wanting to pursue a career in film and even just like media broadly with like, you know, I want to do comics or I'd love to work on games or movies. Uh, I think it all gets owed, not entirely because there's, you know, games and comics and shit that I would attribute to. But from the movie world, it's got to be Jaws. It's endlessly rewatchable to me. I've seen it, I don't know how many times, yet every time the shark is barreling at Brody as the fucking boat sinking and he's trying to shoot at the barrel and stuff. Every time I'm still like, is he going to fucking do it? And it's like, yes, you idiot. You've seen the movie how many times? Like, of course, what do you think? It's just going to... It's going to be a different ending where he fucking misses and runs out of bullets and the fucking <laughs> shark eats his ass. Um, how freaked out would you be if you just saw that with your own eyes? Like you were watching it, the same DVD mm-hmm. or Blu-ray, and then it just changed. And it was just a different ending? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That would be like really concerning. You and would, you all would... you guys were like, yeah, that's how the movie ends. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, that, but then what? it would be so scary if that, the rest of your life, like you never had any weird mental slip-ups again, <laughs> but you don't know if you're actually like seeing things as they are. Now. Right. Yeah. That yeah, would be horrifying. one of those like, am I in a simulation? Then like sure. that was the one glitch. But yeah, that movie's just so perfect to me. It's like, it's indicative of the type of shit I'd like to make across games, comics, movies, whatever. Of just like super rewatchable, you know, great characters. There's like so much heart to it, but it is, you know, scary and thrilling and exciting. And, you know, it's like, it's just such a perfect movie to me. So, uh, you know, and there's other Spielberg stuff I could attribute to that. I mentioned Saving Private Ryan, Jurassic Park's another one where it's just like magic on film. Mm. Uh, but anyways... Those are some movies. I'm going to throw out one last movie. Mm, Please take us home. Honestly, really any Tarantino movie, but Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was one Mm. that wasn't necessarily like deeply hit me, but it was just like such a good time. And I loved it so much that I just like, it was, I was riding high on it for a while. Mm. So that's one of those movies that I was just like, I saw and I was like, I love this. And um, that positive energy just carried me for a while. Yeah. So I think I mentioned this a week or two ago, an episode or two ago on the show, that I've sort of got my next few weeks of podcast topics lined up, as it were, which Mm. doesn't usually happen. Usually it's more week to week. Um, But something came up recently in my life that I decided I would make it this week's topic. Last Friday, I happened, I was at home, I had, you know, time to kill or whatever at a couple hours in the morning. I was like, you know what, there's some movies I've missed that I kind of wanted to get to at some point, maybe even begrudgingly in this movie's case. Um, and that was a little movie called Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, or Aquaman 2. Oh, I never watched that. For the uninitiated out there. I don't think, we have, I don't think I've ever seen it either. Mm. And it? watching it, it then dawned on me that that is the last DCEU, D, uh, DC Extended Universe, film. And that we are now, as of 2025, so next July, going to enter the DC 
you, mm -hmm. uh, beginning with James Gunn's Superman, which we'll touch on just a little lightly um, do you, at the end of this topic. Do you, um, how do I put this? Do you rate Amber Heard in that movie? I mean, she's in it, and she's still, like, a really attractive person, which makes everything that happened with the Johnny Depp thing really unfortunate, because it's like, <laughs> man, why you fumbled. You have, why'd you have to turn out? You fumbled? Years? Johnny Depp fumbled? Uh, like, physically. Like, she's just a good-looking girl, you're saying. Like but he, also, like... She was great. But also good if she was, for him, if she was really, like, uh, If she was really, yeah, if she was really also, cool. Maybe a little nuts. <laughs> yeah, the universe she, like, fumbled it for him. If only she wasn't nuts. Um... But so my topic basically is the DCEU, and we did the MCU. I don't think Malcolm was on that episode, but we did that, uh, the Marvel movies, forever ago. Um, and because the DCU is, like, over now, I kind of wanted to just go through all the movies with you guys really quickly. And just Do you want to spend, like, does Watchmen you spend 20 minutes shitting on the DC? Our highs DCU? and lows. Watchmen is not. Watchmen is just its own thing. Would the, uh, Batman, the, would the Batman would not be? Batman would not be. What about, this, what about, the, what about the Suicide Squad? <laughs> the Suicide Squad is technically. Best movie in the DCEU by, uh, by hands down. I haven't really any DC movies. Have you seen, so have I have seen have the Suicide Squad? I've seen. Uh, we all saw it together. The list Amazing here. movie. Yeah. Uh, we begin with a little movie called Man of Steel. Are we ranking these out of 10? Uh, let's, we, rank, let's rank each out of ten. I have like a little running list going for a lot of movie franchises where I don't like do scores, but I'll do like, like I have a list that's like here's all you know however many DCU movies there are like in order hmm. kind of thing. Uh, but for now we'll go chronological just through them. Man of Steel, where it all begins, um, twenty thirteen. I think this is an interesting time. The MCU at this point, obviously like five years in full swing. We have an Avengers movie, and you know other movies under our belts uh, at this point. Man of Steel is a movie that I enjoy, even though I have glaring issues with it, most notably uh, him murdering General Zod at the end of the movie, because that's just so antithetical to what Superman is. He is not a killer. Um, so but isn't it? He's like about Zod about to murder a family. Yeah, he's or like about to kill the family. Which I get the point in a way is supposed to symbolize. And I think Snyder's talked about this: the idea that like it's him choosing Earth over Krypton hmm. as like you know his home and his roots and all that stuff. And I like the symbolism of that. Same when we get to Batman v Superman in a second, where that has the infamous Martha thing, which I think in the moment is like really stupid. But again, I like the symbolism of like Batman having the realization of like, oh, I'm about to murder this fucking guy. And in his dying breath, all he's worried about is like his mom mm. and how that like immediately humanizes Superman in Batman's eyes. Cool idea. Piss poor execution. Mm. Um, and I think it's a similar thing in Man of Steel. But Man of Steel, what do we think, fellas? You're going to rank it? Like out of 10? Sure, if you I guys barely remember it, so I'm gonna give it a seven because I remember I liked it. Eight out of ten. I love Man of Steel. I'm gonna go eight five. I I used to, I, I remember loving that movie. I haven't seen it in many years, but mm -hmm. I remember thinking I loved the non superhero parts a lot. Mm -hmm. Like just him being in the restaurant mm -hmm. working as a bartender, and then like mm -hmm. this like drunk asshole like messing with him, and then he ends up like putting like all these trees through the guy's car, Yo, <laughs> yeah, the I truck, that, yeah. uh, and just like I don't know. Henry Cavill is like a, a wonderful Superman. I just think he looked apart and had like this like really good guy vibe about him and i just i've seen i've said vibe three times this episode and i've always <laughs> talked about how i hate that word yeah <laughs> you're what are you doing the honestly i, I don't want to like do an overarching statement here but this story of the dceu is the idea of the puzzles being there but whoever the directors are whoever the producers are fitting them in the most idiotic sure. way possible well if i had to use two words to describe the entire dceu and very specifically henry cavill as superman it would be wasted potential yeah um, For sure. Yeah, so I'd say eight five. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I had a number. I haven't really thought about numbering a lot of these, but maybe Man of Steel, I would come in more around like a seven seven five, because um, I do like it. There's mm. elements of it that really work. I like his relationship with, uh, what's this? I forget the guy's Kevin name, Costner. But Kevin Costner as John Ken and like Russell Crowe as Jor El and the sort of like two sort of different wisdoms and also I, michael shannon is such an underrated michael actor. shannon is fan fucking tastic as zod i love that shit um the hans zimmer score like that superman theme i think it'll never really how repeat. do we keep mentioning hans zimmer is he's he does he do everything he's the goat does he do everything he's the goat it'll never necessarily get to like the chris donner like the fucking 
like the John Williams Superman theme that like everybody thinks of, but like the Hans Zimmer one is just so good. That scene of him in the Arctic or whatever it is, like learning to fly for the first time when it is the like shot of like so his sick. fist on the ground it and like, the rocks and shit start swirling and yeah, it, like cracks. And then it's like him kind of jumping first, which is also, you know, the whole like thing of like leap tall buildings in a single bound. Like it's kind of that. I not... also remember it, like the, the visuals look great for the time too. Yeah. And it's cool. The fight at the end. I know people have issues. That's actually something that like bugs me, but not as a lot of, not as much as a lot of people with the idea of like people talk about where it's like how many fucking hundreds of thousands or millions of people die in Metropolis oh, through buildings and stuff? at the end of the movie. But to me, it's like, I like the kind of almost like over the top arcadiness of like, yeah, if you had these two fucking powerhouses going at it in like New York, what do you think would happen to like mm-hmm. all these buildings in the city and shit? Um, so Man of Steel, you're up there. We then arrive at Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. How many movies are those? It's going to take 30 hours. Three years later. I mean, some of these will blow through because I also think, and like Joker's on here, which doesn't count. I haven't seen Batman um, versus Superman. Same with the Batman. Yeah, let's go, let's go up to the top. Um, but Batman versus <laughs> Superman, this was also interesting because this was, you know, three years later after Man of Steel. And this is when we basically learned that we were getting an actual DC universe because we didn't really know that. With Man of Steel, it was more like, hey, they're doing another Superman movie. What a fucking weird choice for the second movie in the universe, by the way. Exactly. Well, yeah. And then we no get Batman, Batman movie, Superman, no, which is no Wonder Woman movie first. Like. This is also the problem with the DCEU of like, hey, let's catch up to Marvel as fast as possible without actually like, you know, earning it, earning it and building up to it properly. Um, it's funny with Batman vs. Superman because I remember watching it as a kid in the theater and leaving it like, I mean, kid, I was like 16, but leaving like so excited and being like, oh my god, like I had so much fun watching that. And yeah, there was these problems and whatever. And it was only once I like sat with it after, as time went on, that I was like, man, that was kind of like at best okay mm. sort of thing. And like, there's stuff in it I like. It will always be cool seeing Batman and Wonder Woman and Superman like standing together for the first time when they're fighting Doomsday at the end. Like that will always be cool. There's like some fun character moments in there Patrick says no it is not it is not fun it's not fun seeing mm-hmm. the trinity together for the first time you kept shaking your head while the you trinity. were saying that yeah they're known as like the DC they're known trinity. as the trinity yeah oh cool and like you know but then you get these things where it's like hey here's jesse eisenberg as lex luther for some reason <laughs> doing a horrible like i don't know what the idea was behind that version of lex luther here's instead of giving them their own movies you remember the awesome scene where batman's at a fucking computer looking through Lex Luthor files and there's like the Aquaman file and the Flash file and the Cyborg file and the Wonder Woman file. And it's like, why are we introducing the entire fucking Justice League? Honestly, everything this ab- way? everything about that movie makes me want to pull my hair out. Can I just say? Mm. Never seen it. Wow. You've never I've seen it? Never seen didn't we watch it? Didn't we go on a school trip and watch it all together? I've never seen Batman v Superman. I watched it on a school trip and I swear you were there. Never seen that movie. Never once seen that movie. <laughs> oh wow! Well, you're not missing out on anything. I was gonna say, um, oh my god, enough said. <laughs> Go on. We then get to the su- uh, sorry, just Suicide Squad. We don't want to confuse big. It. We don't want to confuse yeah. it with greatness. <laughs> Suicide Squad was one I remember being excited for at the time because it's like, okay, I like the Suicide Squad. Coming off of Batman vs Superman <clears throat> was like so heart wrenching, and I just remember the previews and like, you know fucking the whole cast on Jimmy Kimmel and it's like Will Smith and like the soundtrack's really cool and it's Will Smith and Margot Robbie and like you know uh, fucking Jai Courtney there and I forget who's Rick Flagg sure, uh, De- uh, something what's her name what's her name Car- Cara Delevingne Cara Delevingne's and like Viola Beautiful, Davis as uh, oh, Amanda Waller which was like perfect casting for Waller and all that stuff and I remember the excitement and I know I don't know how people I know because this movie's terrible and people hate it which they <laughs> should but I remember, and I know I've expressed this to you guys before, like watching the first 20, 30 minutes of that movie of them like getting this sort of team together. And it's like, it was like the needle drops and like the really slick, I liked, you know, the graphics that were like kind of like custom every character. Like when they go to like Deadshot and it's like the slow mo on like Will Smith and it is like mm. Deadshot and it's like all these fucking stats about him and all this mm. stuff and whatever. Like, and even the, you know, when they were trying to actually kind of make a universe where it's like, Harley Quinn and there's the scene of her and Joker in like the car mm. and we get the fucking Ben Affleck cameo of him like landing on Joker's Lamborghini and shit and then they do the Captain Boomerang thing and it's him robbing a bank and like there's the fucking Flash cameo and it was so like 
oh my god, they're doing this like an actual living, breathing universe and all this shit. And then they get on the helicopter. <laughs> And they go to do their mission. Uh, and the rest of the movie is just downright terrible. It's awful. People keep saying they want the David Ayer cut of Suicide Squad, like how we got the Snyder cut of Justice Why League. Why do we want that? Because <laughs> David Ayer's talked about it. It's like, my version of Suicide Squad would have been a little different and blah, 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 and all the shit. I'm like, yeah, but... I don't care. Yeah, okay. Go away. Why was Jared Leto Joker? <clears throat> Why did he have the stupidest design ever? All of he it. He was a mob boss. Not good. <laughs> I also never seen it. He was a gangster. We then, of course, come to Wonder Woman, one of the few shining gems of the DCEU. I straight up love this movie. Why are we on this? What, what is the significance of this slide Website? here? Uh, uh, it's just an Aquaman. Pit so that's, that's from the second one, I think. Yeah, I just I needed a list of all the movies. Oh, in the I see. Order, so here, that's why I have it here. Uh, I love Wonder Woman so much. It's by no means like some groundbreaking, great. Like it's not even the best thing. It's a good movie. Though. You know, the superhero genre has to offer. I just think Gal Gadot is so good in that movie. Her and Chris Pine's. She's beautiful. Uh, though, huh? Like they're back and forth. They have so much chemistry together. Of like them on the boat, whatever, talking about like men and women. Like banging and shit, or when they have Chris Pratt on Themyscira and Chris he's in Pine? like, or, sorry, I said Chris Pratt. When they have Chris Pine and he's like chilling in that like nowhere near his hands tub up. or whatever, and he's like butt ass naked, and then he like stands up to get out. And Wonder Woman comes in and like the double entendre with them talking about the watch and shit. Like mm -hmm. all that's great. I love the action. The World War One setting to me was really cool. Mm. The fucking scene where they're in the trench in like no man's land, and she finally like stops listening to. Steve Trevor there and just goes over the top of the trench and that whole scene of her like being in no man's land with the shield and when she's like pinned down by the fucking machine gun and shit when they fire like the artillery there's the bullet that she does the thing with the bracelets yeah. that's awesome but I love it might be when like a few minutes later when she's in the town which is the rest of that scene that I love but when like the mortar shell or tank shell mm -hmm. or whatever it just gets fired at her and she just fucking bats it away with her shield mm -hmm. like so fucking good Ares is kind of whatever as a villain. I yeah. do love the shot when he's like wearing the like molten tank metal and shit mm -hmm. as his armor. And just the shot where he like digs his fingers into the mask and then like swipes down to make the eye slit things. Badass. Um, Wonder Woman. Fellas, anything. Never seen it. I really like Wonder Woman. Never seen it? I told you I haven't seen like any DC movies. <laughs> I, re I really like Wonder Woman. I think it's a, it's a good movie. It I don't think it never it didn't blow me away, but I remember it being like that was great. It's I had just a good time. really solid. Like it's yeah. by no means. It's know, like a Man of Steel. I think I, I, it's I better than Man of Steel. I prefer, oh. I prefer Man of Steel, but I'd, I'd give I'd give it like a seven five or an eight, probably an eight. I like I like it seven seven five seven me. five. Yeah. We arrive at Justice League or Justice League as people like to call it the 2017 theatrical version, which was not the way it was originally supposed to. Have be you guys seen the five. Have you guys seen the Snyder Cut? I have. No. It's four hours. Is it's it good? Way too long. Uh, I think it's better than this one. I believe it's on this list, so we'll get to it. I think it's better than the original one, but it also is very like, did it need to be four hours? Wait, did, Snyder? did Superman die in Batman vs. V Superman? Oh, yeah, Superman dies in Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what, because I'm, I'm remembering Justice League. Oh, wait, he was dead, Yes, and, they, and like, then they brought him back him. to life. I was like, wait, why is he dead? Oh, yeah, he died. I didn't watch Batman vs. Superman, so I was so confused. I was like, why are they, why is, why is he dead? Yeah. yeah, he dies fighting Doomsday. It's a whole fucking thing. Uh, the 2017 Justice League, I think, is okay. I remember it being kind of largely underwhelming, which is so I don't remember sad. anything about it. <laughs> I don't remember Justice anything. League, yeah. When it's like, hey, we're going to take like the best heroes DC has and finally assemble the Justice League. And uh, it's you're like, missing Green Lantern, but okay. Well, yeah, they're and also Martian missing, Manhunter. They're Martian missing Manhunter. a Green Lantern. Oh, dope character. But it's mm -hmm. like, and then the movie comes out and it's like wholly underwhelming. Again, there's cool moments. When they do the flashback of Darkseid pulling up on Earth, and there is that Green Lantern cameo where it's not like a human Green Lantern, but it is like some alien Green yeah. Lantern. Seeing that for the first time was such a like, holy shit, a Green Lantern like moment. Um, uh, may I say your um, summary here has painted you in such a naive light. You were always excited in each one of these movies. <laughs> like cool when did when moments. when did your when did your cynicism kick in? I mean, for a lot of them, it was watching the movies, and then for some of them, it was afterwards. But, like, even Justice League is one, like, what I'm saying is yeah. even the movies that I don't like, mm -hmm. with a few exceptions. There's several have, linings. There's, like, little nuggets in there, again, to the wasted potential idea of, like, even though it wasn't built, it wasn't earned at all, 
there was a certain amount of like seeing the Justice League together, mm-hmm. having these characters interact where I'm like, okay, there's some stuff here. The thing when they're fighting Steppenwolf like under Gotham in the harbor or whatever, mm-hmm. and it's like that tunnel thing they're in. Like that fight where Wonder Woman's fighting Steppenwolf and you get the flash moment of like him running around and like Wonder Woman's lost her sword or whatever. And it's just that moment where he just kind of like taps it and like nudges it mm. back to her and that kind of shit. That's cool. Like, there's little moments in here, but overall, just as never seen. Didn't, uh, didn't Ezra Miller uh, like assault a woman or something? <laughs> yeah, there's. He did a lot of. He got drunk yeah. and assaulted like a woman, multiple didn't he? multiple offenses. What did what what? Well, there was a string. There was a a point in time where a string like of drunk, these events it was like happened. Drunk driving or DUI, or then he like hit somebody as an old lady, and then he got like. Yeah, there was a why shit for fun. I don't know, man. There he has problems. Aquaman, the first one. Uh, can I just that say, was good. That can was I just good, say, though. I was going to say, super average, bro. It was just whatever. Oh, this, yeah. to me, is a bit of a yeah. controversial take. I like the first Aquaman. It's not my favorite thing. It's fine. It's definitely just fine, but I enjoy I, like, the I would, ride. I'm, uh, for me, it's like 6.5. Oh, just, I was going to say okay. no less than a 7. I'm going to say 6.5. It's, like, it's just okay. Mm. I, don't I like, like it. it. I enjoy the ride. I like <laughs> them finally putting him in a real suit because again one thing i will give the dceu stuff credit for is a lot of their costuming and suit work is just chef's kiss like superman suits awesome wonder woman's look is great i remember seeing ben affleck's batman for the first time when they went with the very like dark knight returns look of like the stubby ears but just like finally having him in a gray suit i don't know why it took fucking decades for that to happen but like finally having the gray with just the giant Black it's a really good it. suit. It was like such a good. It's not better than Pattinson's, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm torn on that front. I like Pattinson's a little more, but like, just it was so good seeing that. And then by the time we get to Aquaman, where it's like, hey, not the weird ass dark green thing he was in in Justice League. It's like the green pants, the orange armor mm-hmm. thing. Like, awesome, looks great. Um, I like him and Mara in that movie. I like Black Manta, even though he's not really in it a lot, just because I'm a sucker for that character. Everything with his brother and Ocean Master, and that's another like right out of the comic suit. I like Willem like, Dafoe in that purple. movie. Willem Dafoe's. Oh God, we have to get to Aquaman too. <laughs> Willem Dafoe's cool in that movie too. So it's like I like Aquaman. It's a fun enough time. It's like not, you know. It's I'd watch it again. I'd be fine. like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, like I, you know, I check it out again. Shazam! Hmm. Oh, I forgot about that movie. I actually legitimately <laughs> like Shazam. Again, it's like I like it more than Aquaman. Fine, it's like you know in that similar like seven. I'm saying seven for kind of category, but I actually think the first Shazam is a lot of fun. I think Zachary Levi is like really good it's as idea. Billy Batson grown up of the idea that it's like a fucking. I, he's not ten, but like whatever Billy is in the I movie. I like when his friends are recording him and doing all this. Crazy yeah, and shit. like all that shit of him and Freddie, and like when he's recording him, like testing out the powers. The thing of them going into the convenience store when they realize he's old enough and being like, "I would like to purchase beer or whatever," mm, mm. and like the robbers come in mm. and then them like drinking the beer and being like, "This shit tastes like ass." Like, why do people like? <laughs> I, this? I like the mystical side of things too, with like him getting his powers from that wizard guy. Yeah, like there's the little magic stuff to it. Um, Mark Strong is like you know fine I love that guy. as the the bad guy there like it's kind of whatever but like that whole thing i just i find the first shazam him and like the family and the other foster kids there's just a lot of like heart to it like it's heartwarming and fun when they do the whole like marvel family thing at the end of like them all kind of doing the shazam thing does it make a second one they do it in the first one. Like at no, the I'm end. saying, do they, do they have a second Shazam movie? Yes, they do. We'll also get to Fury of the Gods. Yeah, we'll get I to that. I've never seen that. I don't think we watched Did we watch that? No. <laughs> and none of you ever should or need to. Um, oh, what the fuck? I also just, again, like cool moments or shots. I will never get sick of that shot in the first Shazam when he goes to see his real mom and like she doesn't want him and all that. And like that's. Oh, works. yeah. It's like an emotional beat. In front of the door. Yeah, but then when he leaves that apartment building, it's that shot of him on the roof at like kind of like night or whatever. And when he just runs and jumps off the building and he's like midair, Shazam, and the lightning hits him and it's the poof of smoke. Oh, and then he yeah. just goes darting out of it. It's like good shit. Another example, good suit, the mm. fucking bright red with like the glowing yellow lightning bolt and the white cape and all that shit. Love it. They totally fucked his suit in the second one. I don't know why. Um, 
Joker, we're not counting. Birds of Prey. Did we watch this together? We did. I don't even know what that is. We did. The like Harley Quinn and other lady superhero yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Malcolm definitely. Mary did. Elizabeth Winstead was Mary on Elizabeth that. Mary Elizabeth Winstead Beautiful. is uh, Huntress. It was Harley Quinn. It was Black Canary. Black Canary, Huntress. Huntress. Um, yeah. Domino? Cassandra Kane's in it, who mm. like in the comics is another Batgirl. But is Domino a Marvel character? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Um, Birds of Prey is an interesting one. I feel like I don't think about it at all, ever. Yet it is on one the, of the better, better end, yeah. which is like funny. Where it's like this is actually like a fun time. I would, I, based on how I remember, I'd say like around a seven, seven five. Seven. And like Ewan McGregor is like surprisingly mm. really good and fun as Black Mask. Where he, it's like he's a great, he's a great actor. I mean, Obi Wan, the goat. Obi Wan. Um, apparently, he's really good in Train Spotting too. I've never seen that movie, mm. but he's like a. Oh yeah, he is in that. Yeah. He's good in uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. There you that's go. I've also. So it's not called Jack and the Beanstalk. What's it called? Christopher Robin. Huh? What are we talking about here? The Jack and the Beanstalk one. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. James and the Giant Peach? Oh, yeah. He's apparently in that one. (coughs) Tim Burton movie. You guys don't know the tale of the Jack and the Beanstalk? I know know. Jack and the Beanstalk. I don't know they made a movie. I don't know the Jack and the Beanstalk movie with Ewan McGregor. (laughs) Go on. Um, But yeah, so Birds of Prey is one that I feel like gets forgotten about often, yet it's on the higher end, which is a little odd. Um, God, 2020. What an interesting time. Wonder Woman 1984. Never Didn't seen watch it. it. Never seen it. Such a disappointment. Such a letdown. Mm. Not a good movie at all. So much weirdness in it. Mm. To me, it was exciting when it's like, I wish it wasn't still a prequel. Like, I wish it was modern times. I don't know why they went with the 80s thing. But when it was like, we're getting Cheetah, who's like the quintessential Wonder Woman antagonist. It's like, okay, cool. Pedro Pascal. He's in Kind it? of a little before he like mm. blew up. But like him as fucking Maxwell Lord or whatever. It's like, okay, cool. And then you're watching the movie and it's just like, here's one thing. Okay. Now we're getting into some of the really shit movies. So there's going to be things to break down for you guys, especially because you've never seen this. As we all know, spoiler alert, Chris Pine dies mm. at mm-hmm. the end of the first one yeah. when he flies the plane away. Oh, he's back to in the save one, right? the world mm-hmm. and he dies. Kind of the whole premise of Wonder Woman 1984 is they find this like stone. That lets you wish for things. <laughs> so there's like this wishing stone, but mm-hmm. it's from like, you know, a mischief Greek god. So it's like a monkey paw type thing where, you know, you get what you want, but it like kind of fucks with you a little. Mm. Sh- Wonder Woman wishes for Steve Trevor kind of thing. I forget if she does it like intentionally or whatever. And what happens is, stick with me now, fellas. <laughs> Steve Trevor doesn't get revived. Steve Trevor comes back reincarnated in another man's body mm. who she meets earlier in the movie because I think he at like a bar some guy like hits on her or whatever not in like a scuzzy way but he just kind of like asks to buy her a drink and she's like heartbroken over Steve Trevor still and she won't fucking do it Steve Trevor Chris Pine like inhabits that guy's body so same it is Chris, same, same actor so it is Chris Pine like it's Chris Pine mm. but there's a scene in the movie where it's not like it literally happens it's like that guy goes to bed and then he fucking wakes up as Chris Pine so it, but it's like but it's that guy's body He's because that guy's later life. in the movie she gives up Chris Pine and it's supposed to be this emotional beat of her like letting Steve Trevor go and losing him again and then it reverts back to that guy people talked about that this at the time she bangs this other guy. And I know some people were trying to make the argument of like, well, if Gal Gadot was going to come bang me, I wouldn't say no, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but it's like, that's not the point. This guy didn't consent to banging Gal Gadot. Mm. <laughs> she just uses his body as Steve Trevor. But it's isn't it mentally him too, though? Because he gets reincarnated. It in? is. Like, it's mentally and physically, for all intents and purposes, but the original is man is Steve still, Trevor. But the original man but is still like alive. If you put Steve Trevor over the original guy, and if, like, you zip, if you unzip Steve Trevor, it's the fucking original dude. <laughs> so it's, like, the weirdest choice. This, guy, this, guy, this poor guy has a family and kids. And of, like, <laughs> yeah, and now his wife's going to be like, you yeah. cheated on me with Wonder Woman. So it's yeah. like, why didn't you just make it that he comes back and you know what when I, she has to let him go, he fucking fades away into fairy you know, dust? You know what I think? I feel like a lot of people were on your page of like Steve Trevor is one of the best parts of the first movie yes and their dynamic is one of the best parts of the first movie so like we gotta like hold on to that yes you know it was totally an example of like we wanna bring that back yeah which again fine whatever but it's like why does Wonder Woman rape this fucking other poor guy like <laughs> it's so weird alright let's, let's move on uh Zack Snyder's Justice League so it sounds like none of you have seen yeah, it no. uh <clears throat> It's interesting. It's cool to see. Four hours is long. I wouldn't. I don't think I've ever seen a movie that long. Four I know. hours. 
there's definitely, especially because there's like an epilogue at the end of the movie where like the last 20, 30 minutes is like the nightmare future scenario where like Superman's mm-hmm. gone bad. That's not cool. And so it's like Batman, Joker, The Flash, Cyborg, and Deathstroke. Who's, who's Joker? Who's jo- Jared why Leto jo- still. Why Joker? It's like all, hero, all heroes then and Joker is there. And Joker and Deathstroke. And it's like they're supposed to be kind of like whatever's left of like the resistance kind of thing. But there's some cool stuff in there like – the fact that Steppenwolf's still the main bad guy of the movie, but like you get a little more Death side? from or what's uh, that? Dark Side Dark there, side. and even at the end of the movie where they like fuck up Steppenwolf, I think they like Wonder Woman even cuts his fucking head off or something. Mm. But like some boom tube opens, and it is Dark Side just standing there as they like throw Steppenwolf's body in, and it's this kind of just stare down between like mm. the League and Steppenwolf. They bring Superman back. They give him like you know the black suit with a gray symbol. Which they didn't do in the mm. original. I kind of want to watch it. It's Me interesting. Too. I'm putting it on the wheel. Okay. Well, that'll be a long one. It's interesting. <laughs> four it's hours like, starting at ten. Myself, we got four that hours starting at ten thirty. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Like I didn't get it better, but it also is just very clearly like so full of itself and like what the fuck. Like it just didn't need to be four hours. Uh, as we come up to the final batch here, the Suicide Squad. Best movie. Easily the best them. movie of the a entire thousand percent. DCU. Just nine point five out of ten. It's so nine point five. So Jimmy Gunn, incredible. thank God you're taking over. Beautiful, because it's just so good. The way he takes, kind of like with Guardians, all these like bottom of the barrel fucking characters, except for really Harley, um, and just makes them this like lovable group of like oh polka dot man dude i got emotional as fuck with polka dot man and with uh the rat Fucking catcher rat girl. catcher too like i, I and, remember like, blood sport and peacemaker like i remember these garbage characters i remember like when they give like her backstory with her father i yeah. was like i was like tearing up bro. i was like what the hell like this this movie makes you care about these kind of like d-list characters exactly and not only that but it's just like it's funny it's dramatic it's it's sad it's um it's just paced perfectly. I don't know. It's just like the, it's the perfect combination of when I watch a movie in a movie theater, I want to laugh. I want to like be mm-hmm. be like enthralled. I want to be like I want to see drama and action. Like that, it had everything. It was beautiful. I love the fucking opening of like the fake out of Harley <laughs> yeah, and like the Suicide Squad team. They Pete send Davidson. in yeah. and with fucking yeah. Pete Davidson. Yeah, and then lit up <laughs> when they all get like fucked up except for Harley and Rick. Flag. And, that, and that weasel thing. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, God. When like all of them get fucked up except for Harley and Rick Flag and whatever. Like Rick Flag. Kinda... Isn't John Cena one of the guys getting? Fucked yeah, up? Peacemaker. No, he's Peacemaker. But then when oh, it then the cuts best. to like the second team. And it's Bloodsport and Peacemaker and, you know, Polka Dot Man and Rat Catcher. Dude, and I love Peacemaker. Shout out King Shark. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone. What a perfect. Was, I didn't know he played that. Every wow. bit, every joke they try and do with him of like when he goes to fucking eat Rat Catcher or whatever mm, yeah. on the first night <laughs> when she's sleeping. And just the like, you know, when they're doing the debriefing with Amanda Waller and it's like, any questions? And it's just hand and she's like yes and always that is your hand good <laughs> or even in the beginning when they're like grabbing peacemaker and blood sport and them and they go into the cell that king sharks in, and like john cena has that moment he's like holy shit like there's a fucking shark man yeah. and when he's sitting there holding the book and like john cena one of them makes the thing of like he's holding the book upside down and it's like he doesn't know how to read like he's, <laughs> he's trying to pretend Peacemaker? yeah like mm. king sharks trying oh, king to Shark. like pretend like he knows how to read mm. but he's got the book just clearly upside down um what was that what was that scene where that we were laughing at? I was going to say to me the best joke in the entire movie is when they're going into the camp that they think is like the, the rebel camp or whatever. like the communist guys or whatever mm. but it's the rebels oh, and like okay. peacemaker and bloodsport are having like that fucking dick measuring contest who's more so badass like, who's more <laughs> badass fucking up all the guys and then I love the end cap to it of peacemaker shoots the dude and it's like you know not blood sports like non-lethal and he's like exploding bullets and the fucking guy detonates behind him mm. and i forget what the setup is but it's like mm. you know nobody likes a show off or whatever mm. and john cena's thing is like unless what they're showing off is dope as fuck mm. and it's just the most perfect <laughs> fucking delivery from idris elba under his breath of just fuck that's true <laughs> so it's such a stupid joke but every time Comes it right. gets me of just yeah. like him just like in that moment like acknowledging like can we find that can you find that scene uh, i'll mention it while we're here peacemaker the show they are doing a season two which james gunn has even said it apparently isn't gonna like is james gunn involved with it yeah because he was involved on the show how like, in what proper. way producer i think he wrote all wow. of it and directed i'm gonna maybe watch some it. of it i'm gonna watch it's it. on crave peacemaker the show is actually legitimately a so funny mm. it's hilarious but it's also like because peacemaker in the movie's interesting where he's like funny but like kind of an idiot but then i love the twist where he's like the bad guy kind of 
working with Waller of like, no, we can't let like the fact that the U.S. government was in on all this. He's like Star uber shit. patriotic. Type yeah, thing. like we can't let that get out because that and that fucks things up. And then he kills Rick Flag and all that. And the show kind of like tackles that of mm. him like regretting killing Rick Flag and being like, fuck, like I'm kind of. I was in the wrong there, and, like, I'm kind of an asshole. They give him Vigilante as, like, sort of this sidekick, and their dynamic is... it's The show is just so good. It's mm. legitimately great. Um, And the guy who's the high evolutionary oh, in actor? Uh, Guardians 3 mm. is one of the main people in it, too. And then some of the people from Canary. The Suicide Squad, Isn't the, the, uh, blonde the blonde chick? lady who's his uh, James Gunn's wife, mm. uh, and the bigger dude with He's the beautiful beard and the glasses... Oh like some of those people from the Suicide Squad that mm-hmm. were like you know Waller's people are like in it mm-hmm. with Peacemaker, so it's kind of connected that way. We're getting a season two. Um, I'm gonna watch that soon. But yeah, Peacemaker, the show is legitimately great. Uh, as we near the end here, our favorite gentleman, Black Adam or Black Adam, <laughs> Black a Adam. Mess. What a mess of a fucking movie, dude. Black Adam straight up sucks. Dog shit. Um, <clears throat> it's a it's the, the biggest piece of dog shit. The fight scene at the end <laughs> is literally twenty seconds long, and that's it. Mm-hmm. I, I was kind of glad. I was like was... The Rock. You know, when he's in action movies, it's whatever. I actually think The Rock has really good, like, comedic chops. Sure. Like, I think he's really funny. I will never. I also appreciate his commitment to this movie and how badly he wanted Cavill back as Superman when we get that post credit thing, you know, a month before James Gunn fucking <laughs> comes in and it's like, hey, we're getting rid of all that shit. I appreciate his commitment to the bit. However,. I will never get over my frustration of like, I get that you're the rock and you have this brand and you want to be like the, the action guy. star and the mm. good guy and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, that's not Black Adam. Mm. He's the bad guy. Mm. You know what you should have done as Black Adam? Been in Shazam 2 mm. and we could have had the two of you fucking going at it. And if you wanted to do eventually, like they talked about doing a fight with you in Superman, whatever. Do that too. They did the same thing with Venom too. Yes, Venom. It's the same shit where it's like I don't want him to be a good guy, bro. And it's like that's not what you are. You're the bad guy. And he's like he's not like a he's like a weird guy. It's just like it's just strange. Yeah, it's just odd. You know, Venom three. The title just came out. and They're calling it like Venom. The last dance. The last dance. Horrible. Get fucked. (laughs) Horrible. Um, can't wait. Um, but it's like, did we watch the second one? You guys didn't, but I went I've saw never it in seen the, the theater. The Let There Be Carnage. I, I even Let seen There it. Be Carnage. I haven't even seen the second one. <laughs> Would you the believe, Mark? The fact think, that Woody think? Harrelson was Carnage just threw me off and I didn't want to see it. Which is also horrible <laughs> casting, even though I like Woody Harrelson. Would you believe that at some point in the movie, the line is uttered, Let There Be Carnage? I'm not, I am not surprised. <laughs> um, Let There Be Carnage. I mean, honestly, honestly, I also wouldn't be surprised if in the third movie they said, this is the last this dance. Is the last uh, dance. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm, thoroughly, the I'm thoroughly convinced that... Every once in a while, they make these movies on purpose. Dude, why did I? Why they, did I they just, must uh, know. Why did this feeling surge through me that I really want to watch Venom Two on, on the wheel? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I it's really like want to watch Morbius it. thing. It's like a it's Morbius like thing. Morbid curiosity. Yeah. It's like, like I need to know why Morbius is so yeah, bad. Dude, I need to I know. I saw this guy comment. Do Madame Web at some point, dude. I have Madame Web. I, I saw Web. this guy <laughs> commenting, being like, "I legitimately like Morbius, and it's a fun, good movie." Oh <laughs> and I was like, "It's a fun, good movie." How are people like this are allowed to vote? Yeah. Yeah. Continue with. Excuse me. With uh, yeah, Black Adam. The only redeeming thing in that movie to me is Doctor Fate, because I love that. I like, so that was awesome. I like even that. Was really that cool. I like the they side. Fuck up. I the one of the parts. The only the only parts I liked aside from uh, Doctor Fate was like this like side com- comedy relief relief character. Patrick didn't like him, but he's like that Arab dude. That oh, I, li- I like that oh, guy too. That, he had funny. some yeah. he had some funny like self deprecating shit, and I was like, oh, he's he's, he's like a Who? silly guy. His name is I mean the, the Arab guy that was like driving the car all the time. Yeah, and he sings. Oh, the song? That guy was funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, singing the one song. I Baby come back. Yeah. Baby come back. Yeah, and even, like, you know, there's a couple moments, like, I mean, it's very on the nose, but, like, when Black Adam wakes up and he, like, not when he's in the cave, but when he's outside, in the end? fucking up all the military stuff and, like, Paint It Black's playing. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. All right, whatever, Paint It Black, Black Adam, sure, he's fucking up these guys, blah, blah, blah. But everything else, I like <laughs> the other JSA characters, like, they're fine. JSA? Cyclone, uh, the Justice Society uh, guys, like, Hawkman is the worst out of all of them, but, like... Cyclone's all right. Adam Smasher's like, you know, he's funny, whatever. Wasn't Hawkman a dick in that movie? Yes, he's like got to stick up his asses the whole movie. Yeah. Dr. Fate, Pierce Brosnan. Beautiful. Such good casting. I love the look. I love the like no it eyes. so cool, At the bro. end, they, yeah. when like Hawkman has his helmet and like uses the illusions or whatever and they do the eyes on the helmet for a second there. It's like, okay, cool. But I just love that the no costuming eyes. design of like yeah. he's in the blue with the gold flowing cape and it's the fucking helmet but like no eyes. 
It's so fucking cool. Black Adam. And they waste Black it. Adam. Black Adam is literally, literally Don't say it. the only movie that I've ever watched in the theater where 10, 15 minutes in, I wanted to leave. I did want to leave. <laughs> and, I, and out I, I loud, the, I said, I and out loud, I said, time yeah. and what was going on on the screen that I was like, what is going on? Can we leave the movie? Yeah, I remember saying <laughs> out loud, I remember saying out loud, would it be bad if we just left? <laughs> Uh, we'll wrap up the last few here because I don't think any of you have really seen these last few movies. And we're going long as shit on this. I didn't think we'd go this long. Uh, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which is Shazam 2. I almost couldn't get through this watching it at home on like my laptop one night. Um, <laughs> Helen Miram and Lucy Liu are the two bad guys for some reason. Who are Neither- those two people? Famous actresses. Just famous actors. Oh, okay. Neither one of them Lucy wanted Liu was to in be Kill in that Bill. movie mm-hmm. at all, very clearly. Uh, the movie sucks. There is like barely anything fun about it. It's not good to watch. The action sucks. The Marvel family's like whack. It's not just, good to watch. Honestly, it's, bad, it's bad for you. Honestly, bad for you. it's been. I've only watched Suicide Squad once in the theater. I have to watch Suicide Squad again because I'm convinced at this moment in time, Fury of the Gods might be my least favorite out of all these. Can movies. I just say, like, all these movies are like. I know we were talking shit about Black Adam, but I would honestly rather watch Black Adams three times in a row in one night than rewatch fucking Morbius, bro. Bro, you're also you're that. misremembering Black Adam. Morbius was uh, you got to be misremembering. Morbius, okay, Morbius Patrick, it was I dreadful. Couldn't, I couldn't do yeah, it. Morbius through. is just like straight up like it's not even like a well put together. <laughs> Nothing good about Morbius. Neither Nothing of them are well put together. Bro, bro, Black Adam. At least I like The Rock generally, and he had some funny lines here and there. I like that side character, that Arab mm-hmm. dude. Like Doctor Fate was cool as shit. Like. Morbius had no redeeming quality, not one. This is true. Couldn't and Black find Adam anything. at least this has like true. an A to B to C. Like, okay, it's a like it's a movie. What was the it's last? Movie. They didn't even what say it was the Morbius. They could have said it was Morbius. Yeah. They didn't say it was Morbius. Yeah. Morbius. Yeah. Morbius. Malcolm, no, the post credit. Malcolm, what was the post credit scene? Oh when my they god! Say, when like, the vulture pulls the, up. The vulture comes up and he goes, "I think we could do some like good together." Mm-hmm. And he and Morbius all he does is go intriguing, and then the movie ends. <laughs> Mike drop my uh, fuck. Intriguing. Yes. Uh, also, come... I saw a post saying Michael Keaton had no idea what the fuck was going on. Yeah, he plays so Walter. He's, yeah, he had no idea why he was there. They brought him in for this post credit scene to say like two lines, and he didn't get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, which makes no sense in universe. Uh, we come to technically this is like the literal end of I've the never DCEU, se- I, I've even never though it wasn't seen the last probably. movie, yeah. The Flash. Have you guys seen the? You watch the Flash? I can't remember. <laughs> what? You haven't seen it. You would know if you saw it. Is it bad? I actually, I like it. It's in again that kind of like middling, maybe seven realm. You would you would compare? You would say it's close to Man of Steel. Wait, was this an Ezra Miller that? one? Yes, it was like his. This was finally, after he did the DUI and yes. assaulted oh, yeah, all this those was people. Like, that's why when it came out, it was kind of like they didn't really like let him do a lot of like interviews press. and marketing mm. and press and shit because mm. they're like, yeah, people kind of really don't like him right now. I like The Flash. It's very comic Do you like Ezra Miller? He wouldn't have been my first choice for The Flash. Do you like him as a person? Uh, I mean, I don't know him, but it sounds like he's kind of a shitbag. Okay, go on. Um, there's some fun stuff in there, like getting Keaton's Batman back, like in the Batman 89 stuff, mm-hmm. even though it's not technically that universe, I don't think, is like... <sighs> This is the one where they do Flashpoint. Yeah, like they kind of do the Flashpoint thing of like him going back in time and saving his mom. Um, we get, uh, I forget, Sasha Kali there as uh, Supergirl. Why are you looking at me when you do that? We're never going to get her again as Supergirl, but like, you know, she was kind of neat in it. Oh, she looked, she looked kind of hot. Um, there's a fun <laughs> moment like early on in the movie before they kind of do the time, like the universe reset thing with the Flashpoint thing where like Ben Affleck's in it for a moment in like a car chase. Wonder Woman shows up like, yeah. so this is kind of like little cameos and some fun stuff. He's wearing the socks. I am wearing the Flash socks. Michael Shannon's back as Zod, mm. which is like a lot of fun. Um, Sounds like a terrible Flash. movie. Uh, Blue Beetle, I don't think any of you saw. Oh, no, never it was saw fine. It. Don't want to. Moving it. on. <laughs> uh, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Don't give a shit about it. I just watched it. It's not very good. Black Manta's suit design in it is everything I've ever wanted. It's perfect, but the movie itself is just entirely kind of a lot of. You didn't mention DC League of Super fuck. Pets. Yeah, that's... Non-DC. We're not going to mention the animated Super Pets there. Um, 
Anyways, so the DCEU, God, that went longer than I thought I would. What I will just say, we'll... Uh, we'll quick. Wheel quick. Wheel quick. <laughs> Let's do this wheel quick. Real quick, just to wrap up. Wait a week. And I don't want to get into too much Whittle detail we. about this. because I'm, I'm your pirate, what a we. A topic I'd like to do eventually in the coming weeks is like things, movies, games, whatever, like that we're looking forward to. Um, as we exit the DCEU and say goodbye to it, well, I'm so... If I could use a very... Uh, important word or a word that makes a lot of sense given the movie we're about to get hopeful mm. about the future of the dc movies it's I think gonna be great james gunn superman gonna be... with james gunn even now that they've like finally started production like i talked about he's, it, he's not directing all the movies ago. by the way right no just this for now but like when we got the still of like just the s on the suit and like they're filming in i think scotland mm, or cool. it's maybe, edinburgh uh not Scotland. Where else would it be? What's Edinburgh. an S country? Okay. What's another what? Wales. Maybe it is. What does that do for you? Glasgow, <laughs> Ireland. I forget fucking where they are filming, but they're doing. They're filming somewhere right now where it's like the Arctic. So immediately people are like, "Oh, Fortress of Solitude" and all this shit. And just like some of the set photos, the way they talk about it, even when we just watched uh, Pearl, fucking Pearl there, and David Cornsweet's in it. I have never seen him in anything ever, and I know in that movie he's like kind of a, like a sleaze bag. Sleaze bag. Yeah. But like before, wait, is he Superman? Yes. The guy in Pearl who she likes, the handsome oh, dude. Who runs the movie. The yeah. very handsome man. He could man. be a good Superman. Before he yeah. like, makes the turn as a sleazebag, like, him and her, that scene they have together in the alley where he's just more like nice and charming and polite. Yeah. And like he is, I mean, maybe just it's compared to Mia Goth, but I think he's like a taller mm. dude. Like he's yeah. a pretty kind of big guy. And I'm his sure he's be fucking working out. Visually, he's perfect. But just like seeing him even in Pearl, and I know it's a like completely different context, but just seeing him in that for like five seconds, I was like, yeah, that guy could definitely pull off because he has that like super gentlemanly handsome he has mm-hmm. yeah he's got that kind of like that almost like aw shucks kind of mm. like aw boyish shucks. boyish charm to him mm. um that like seeing that i was like you know what mr david corn sweat corn whoever corn how sweat. the fuck you say his name corn sweat corn sweat <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, but David Butts. Was. I I am excited. So as we exit the DCEU and say goodbye, and what a fucking long bumpy road Bye, that mate. was, we can look forward to the future. Before I need to we watch all those movies, before we cut out, I've seen one of them. Mm. Before we cut out of this, mm. my topic is also centered around media, mm. and I f- I'm just gonna say this out loud. You guys can completely push back on this if you want. I feel like exhausted talking about media. I feel exhausted. Could we do a whole other like do whatever topic you want. on? Well, do I'd be you very want down to do a different topic. I'd also like to take a break just... because I'm yeah, tired. Let's right take a couple minutes. Yeah. What do you want? Are we ending the show or do you well, have? That's like, why a I want to bring. Topic, that's why I want or... to bring it up before we cut out. We're not cut out yet. Oh, we cut out. Uh, no, I, I haven't cut out <laughs> keep, yet. Keep us in. Keep us in. <laughs> that's what if I want to ask. If you have a different topic, then I would just say do a different topic. If you want to. It's about TV shows. What is the topic? Let's get that out first. Um. It's basically just me asking for. Don't want to do. <laughs> no, I would do that. I think that would be good because that's not like that's not necessarily like a. And I, I have recommendations for you guys as well, oh, just for good. the record. Yeah, I would. I'll, I'll, I'll fucking. I'll find it next week. Yeah, like I'll I, have I the same ones I, in I, mind. I, Let's do it next week. I just so feel like you I can't have do like it. A different topic We've in d- mind. There's been too much to media. I've heard way or... too much about DC today. I don't have one on hand. I'll be honest. I guess so. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there something you, is there something you're forgetting? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> I was about to say Dua Lipa. <laughs> oh yes, please, Malcolm, as we wrap up. Do- here. Doja Cat, <laughs> this is your weekly shout out. Which week are we on? Three, uh, three. Yeah, we need you right here. <laughs> <laughs> Smack dab in the middle. Mar- Mark wants you here too. Mm-hmm. I want to show her off. <laughs> <laughs> Mark wants to show you up. Can um, you can you sell it? Like why why it? should she come? Uh, <laughs> what, what, what would be the benefit to her? <laughs> we need viewership up. <laughs> yep. Um, what would be the benefit to her? Uh, Patrick's mother will make you a very lovely meal. Mm, we'll yeah. take you to the a 
fancy local <laughs> restaurant. Marquis Steakhouse? We're going to bring sure. you to Barbarian. Oh, yeah. Barbarians. Barbarians. We'll take you to Barbarians. We'll pay you a $50 appearance fee. We'll pay, we'll pay for you to go to Barbarians, even though you should be paying for us. Do- but, uh, Doja we'll do Cat? it anyways because we're that kind. Doja Cat, you will be the first to get a Wildly Adequate sweater. Wow. Isn't that, we haven't even made But one and only yet. in the world you'll have it. <laughs> we'll only make one and we'll give it to you. <laughs> even though we want ones, we won't give ourselves one. We'll make it for you just purely so that And you can wear it on the time. podcast while we're just all like this. Mm-hmm. You'll stand out. Mm-hmm. Everyone will want it. Literally everybody will want it. Anyone that watches Doja Cat, Marcin will want it. You know how much fucking money we would make if we made a sweater that Doja Cat wore and then like oh promoted on We like, wouldn't even have to do a podcast like, anymore. Hey, like get this merch. You mm. know how much fucking money we would make? bank Fucking... Honestly, tens of thousands, definitely yeah. mm-hmm. of dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm excited, Doja Cat. Let's get here. <laughs> so, Doja Cat, come here. on by. I can't forget what she looks like. To be honest, but <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, remind uh, Patrick by coming on. The show. I guess that's it. We're gonna just end this show now. Uh, spoiler alert: You know what Patrick's topic is next week, unless he. Oh, bro, cut that mind. out. No, we'll cut it out. Fine. Bleep me, <laughs> bleep me for like a good thirty seconds while I'm talking. You don't about know it. what Patrick's topic <laughs> is because I cut it out. Um, so you know you'll discover that next week. But you know it's about media, I guess. You that's, cut that's, that out too. No, that's not good enough. Cut how that much, out too. How much cut do you that want out me to fucking cut, cut that out? Too. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> at, at the end of the DC saying. topic, and then cut it now. <laughs> Gentlemen, is there anything else we want to get off our chests before we go here? I'm still starving. I need to watch all those DC movies. I'm in a place You're right famished? now where I could <laughs> literally pin Malcolm down Take and a bite. start taking chunks out of his chest, bro. Eat him. Eat him alive. Goodness. All right, then. Um. Uh, Godzilla and Kong tickets have gone live at the time of recording. I want to buy fuck. them immediately. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I, need to, so I need to watch Dune 2 before I watch Godzilla. I'm, I'm, watch I'm not watching now. Godzilla vs. Kong until I watch the first one. I haven't watched the first one. <laughs> watch it in your free time. please. Yeah, just watch it in your free time. I'll watch it with you. Um, and uh, tomorrow night, or I guess, I don't know if it's it's not midnight yet, Invincible Season 2 Part 2 is back. I'm excited. What else are we excited for, fellas? We haven't even, what we watched, like, what, one episode? One episode. Let's watch one right now. Let's watch one right now. Let's what get time snacks. Is it? What time is it? What time is it? It's only 12. <laughs> let's not watch one. Yeah. <laughs> let's get snacks. Let's watch one right let's now. Let's just get snacks. Let's get snacks. <laughs> Um, shit. Well, there well, you go. Man, how's, how, do, how do chicken McNuggets and some fries sound right now? I'll take along. I if had you're dinner get some. before I came. I'm not going to get any, but I'll take along. What about, what about, what about, what about my flurry? What about ice cream? No, I'm not going to partake. Uh, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Please like, share, subscribe, uh, and we'll <laughs> see you next week. Uh, do you like see the you setup? Soon, we didn't ask soon, that. Doja. Do you like the setup? Doja, do you, now we have a couch for you. Why am I looking over There's there? There's literally a seat for you. We used to have, we used to have these shitty little fold-out chairs, and now we've got an actual couch for you. So, like, you know, what else do you want? You don't get your own mic, though, because we only have four. I'll give up my mic. So, you're going to have to <laughs> share. my mic. You're going to have to share with we Malcolm. Can, we can share. You can well, share. Well, share. You such a it, for anytime Doja she cat. says a word. Mm-hmm. Mm. We'll have you. No, we'll have her sitting in your place, and you'll be her fanboy. Mm. Good. Good. <laughs> Dude, she's so beautiful. You okay? I'm just going to be standing you behind hot? her the whole time. Like, oh, do you need a back rub or something? Oh, my God. Dude, you look tense. <laughs> Dude, if she was here, I'd be starstruck. She's so beautiful, bro. Wow. There you go. <laughs> Doja Cat. Happy one year. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary. Thanks for sticking with us. See ya. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're, you're asking for a clip. <laughs>